Attendees are in listen-only mode. Good afternoon, everyone. Russell Wright, OMG Director's Cut Network Empire team is on now part of the OMG Director's Cut team. Gosh, we have so much exciting, so many exciting things going on. I can barely keep track of it, but it is really good to see everyone here. I want to thank you for being even more on time than I was. I went and grabbed a cup of coffee, and we had a little bit of technical difficulty, but here we are, four minutes past the hour, and there's still people coming into the call. Um, we have hundreds of people literally in this call. It's quite impressive. And so really, really good to hear you and see you. But actually, let's just do a sound check. Um, can everybody give us a one? So the team, uh, Jimmy Kelly is here. Jim, yeah. We got That's Sue Bell. <laughs> we got Sue Bell, of course. Uh, thank you so much, both you guys, for being here. I'm super, super excited. Let's see if we can get, let's see if we get the ones coming down the screen here. Now, for those of you who, just in case you haven't used GoToMeeting before, uh, you can always leave a question. Now, when we get this, a group this large, it's starting to actually, wow, still coming in. Crazy. When we get a group this large, what the questions tend to do is flash by us on the questions and answers screen. Um, does everybody else, everybody else able to hear me? We do have a couple of people said they're having a sound issue. They cannot hear us. If you, give, you can hear us, give us a one. One more time. Give me a one. Okay. Uh, I have the same issue on my headset, so change to external. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they hear us, they're not going to be able to know. That's right. Let, let me let you, well, if you guys cannot hear me, give me a one. That, yeah, Sue, I actually didn't know that. I, yeah, some, sometimes Sue really has to remind me of the very, Jazz is like, <laughs> Jazz is always a smart aleck when she's on these calls. Thank you, Jazz, for being here. David Keyes, it's good to see you. David Hood, wow, this is a huge full up event. So anyway, back to the questions. Uh, should you need to ask something? I'm going to do my very, very best uh, to grab these questions. A lot of them will be for Jimmy, a lot of them will be for Sue, and a couple for me. But oh, someone here has said, grateful to be a part of this family. Love you guys. The videos were awesome. Uh, yeah, just great. A lot of compliments. I really appreciate all that stuff. Uh, now, Sue, how is it? that you wanted to, um, oh yeah, okay, one last thing. Uh, I wanted to also wish each and every one of you a uh, powerful, off the hook, best year ever. 2015 is going to be kick ass. We're already starting out of the gates with all of our energy and our clarity about where we're going for the director's cut and already planning the immense amount of information, but very practical, very, very easy to implement compared to when I got online 10 years ago. I mean, gosh, when I look at what we have in this package and what we're, we're going to be working with all you guys with, it was like what I really wanted when I got involved online. So that's really, really important. Now, Sue, how do you want to handle the unbelievably uh, huge... <laughs> Good question. Already out of hand. <laughs> I mean, we've already got uh, 35 questions that have gone. Now, I would All like right. I would like to make it Sue, real quick. Suggestion for everybody: Don't type your questions into the question box and then forget them. Put them on a notepad or a uh, a notated pad or something so you don't lose it in the stream. Okay, just in case, you, if for some reason we're not able to answer your question today, Sue has assigned me the task of organizing the FAQs that we don't get to today. So uh, don't email any of the team members with those. Uh, we'll find a way uh, to talk to you about what we want you to do with those questions. So go ahead, Sue. So here's what I'm thinking. Um, let's start at the top of this Google Doc. I'm trying to put everything out of the the group chat into the Google Doc, if only because I started a Google Doc because I got questions in advance for people who can't be on the call but they wanted to uh, to ask their questions. So I want to start with the questions on the Google Doc and then I've got it highlighted where I stopped cutting and pasting questions just now in the, the Q&A boxes. So let's start with the Google Doc and then we'll move over to the Q&A section and see if we can make this work. Everybody can see the... Uh... The Google Doc should be what's up, right? Does everybody, does everybody see the Google Doc, the screen? Give us a one. Uh, several of you, okay, over 15 people have asked me if this is being recorded. Yes, yes, yes. and yes. I'm recording it. We have backup recordings, and we have backups yeah. of our backups. So you're good. <laughs> All right.
right, so... Yeah, they've um, got your docs, too. Okay, good. So let me just make it a little bit bigger. And, uh, Jimmy, the first question's for you. Why don't you take it away? <laughs> okay, for all the DAS videos, are these concepts, concepts supposed to be applied to our PBN or money site? Um, they could be both. Um, we're going to be putting in an additional video into Director's Cut to show you how to apply the DAS to a PBN directly. Um, we're just waiting to get with Greg and finish up a couple of other videos that are going to go in there. But um, yeah, the, your DAS can be applied to a PB, PBN or a money site. Does everybody, um, if there's anybody that does not know our terminology, DAS and PBN, will you give me a one if you do not understand those terminologies? I'm trying to get a little consensus because there are literally hundreds of people in here. If there's anybody that does not understand those terminologies, we'll quickly just, okay, good, yeah. So there's a few questions. I'd say about 10 people don't know the terminology. So, Sue, do you want to? So, PBNs are, well, my cursor's doing weird things. Good. Uh, Thanks, guys. Private blog network. Mm -hmm. DAS is domain authority stacking. Now, That's these are, yeah, and, and we appreciate you guys letting us know when you don't understand a term or a definition. They should have been covered for you in earlier items with Greg, Jimmy, but, you know, there's a lot of acronyms that get thrown around, and sometimes the brain just, you know, forgets those things. So we'll, we'll continue to go over those should you need it. Let me shoot you this link, Jimmy, so that you can edit this doc while I'm in here. So if you need to add anything, you can. Thanks, Shelley Fisher, for that information. I will check it out. I don't know what that's about. I will check it out. She was talking about a problem with the link somewhere. I see that, yeah. It's all right. I'll look at it. Hmm. All right. So... Um, the next question, any training page, do we need to create social profiles for all PBNs as well or only on the money site? I think you're referring to the one feed stuff that we did, um, Lisa, and that would be the money site that we were talking about. Yeah. Uh, yes, that's all there is to say about that. Okay. Jeff's question, just watched the 5 iframe punch video in the director's cut. Is it okay to have completely unrelated magazines and scoop it as long as you stay themed within each magazine? Yes. Um, in fact, you know, it's better to have a totally mixed up and screwed up theme, it, you know, than not have scoop it at all because you're still passing the domain authority. Um, but the idea is to start, we're trying to move you guys gradually hopefully not that gradually, into an understanding of theming. So theming is a little bit of a weird beast. I usually let Sue and Jimmy talk about one. But the, when, I, when I'm talking about theming, I'm talking about one of the general main categories. I try to match the a Scoop It theme of that magazine to the silo. If their website is big enough to have a silo that's based on that theme, then I try to mirror those. We call that theme mirroring. Okay, it's when you take, you know, when you have an off-page site or service that is matching the same topic. So, for instance, if I'm talking about, I don't know, Sue, give me an example. If we're talking about website silo architecture, I might have a magazine that's all about SEO and website silo architecture. Now, I admit that sometimes I'll mix up a couple of topics or themes together and create a, a theme that's, like, slightly mixed. But the point is, is that, generally speaking, website silo architecture is a topic that I will use in that magazine. Does that make sense? Clear up the idea there? Okay, good. Um, Shelly is asking if we can make our screen larger. Uh, are, Shelly, are you saying that you can't see the, the Google Doc uh, font? Is that what you're saying? I'm assuming that's what it is. Yeah, we could probably okay. increase. We can probably increase. Yeah, we can zoom out. Jazz is not having a problem. She always speaks up. Okay, okay we're good. That's all right. We have different uh, degrees of. I have a 75-inch screen, so it's like really, really large for me. <laughs> so, um, okay, so, uh, excellent. So, Sue, does a WordPress theme we use on our money site matter? Free WordPress themes okay? If it silos, change it out later. Have a list of silo-friendly themes. Um, no, I don't think that the 
the WordPress theme in particular matters so long as it's doing what you want it to do. Um, a lot of them silo. Uh, the list of themes that we have is just a bit outdated. I don't think we've updated it for about six months. Um, hang on a second. Let me see if I can find that list really quick. I'll do that. As, uh, I'll let somebody answer the next question and I'll try to find that link that's got um, our list on it. And um, yeah, do you have anything to say about uh, WordPress themes, Jimmy? No, I mean, I think, you know, as long as you can keep the, the juice flowing through the silo as it's intended as much as possible, then it should be good. I haven't come across too many themes that are horrendous, I would say. <laughs> I do have a couple of things to add when you guys are done. Go for it. Okay. Um, you know, it's kind of weird hanging around developers like Jimmy, Sue, and the, the quality of team that I deal with uh, on a daily basis. And I'm, I don't come from this, I'm not cut from the same cloth. So everything that I've had to learn about this kind of stuff, Sue and the team have had to show me over the last decade. And it's a little bit strange uh, when you're first starting out and you're using themes, there's this weird idea. You like log into WordPress and then you upload a theme. Um, and you don't really kind of don't know what that really is, like what is a theme. You hear about things like style sheets and all these you know, CSS. And I know some of you are super advanced in this, but some of us don't really understand any of those things at all. And what to make matters weirder, when you start talking about the semantic web and all the stuff that you guys are going to be getting at, um, you'll find that there's plugins that try to create, you know, the semantic markup, and then there's themes that do it automatically for you. And you're kind of like going, well, what the heck is going on? Do I use this plugin? Uh, for, and I'm not just talking about the semantic web. I'm talking about anything that you might want a theme to do. This decision that you're always trying to come up with, um, especially a, a non-programmer, is, okay, do I use a plugin to f perform this function, or can I hard code it right into the theme so it's always there? Does that make sense, you guys? Give me a one if that kind of makes sense like that question. Okay, cool. So everybody kind of gets that. Um, but the only answer to that is to ask a professional. <laughs> That's why there's times when I've gone to Sue or Greg or Jimmy and asked, okay, what do you think about this? Like, you know, if I go to Jimmy and there's a particular function or our other person, uh, Kevin, or I go to Mike Hayden and I say, okay, Mike, where's the best place to put this, you know, this aspect? Because there are certain plugins that you could install and it would actually break during the next WordPress update. Whereas if you just wrote it or hard coded into the theme, it wouldn't necessarily break the, you know, uh, break the thing that it's supposed to, to do. So generally speaking, you should ask an es expert if it's a good idea to do what you're trying to do in your WordPress blog within a uh, theme uh, style sheet or they should do it in a plugin. So get help, like put it out there, ask in the forum, ask the rest of the community, ask Sue, ask Jimmy, do you think this is, um, somebody has asked, can you please explain the semantic web? We're going to get to that later. We're going to continue to answer those questions, but I think we need to wait until that rollout is actually occurring because I know that Mike Hayden will be providing you guys with a semantically marked up theme because he's fully graduated from our semantic web training uh, system. So that type of stuff is uh, really, you got to have a, de a developer write that stuff. And um, Mike has chosen to write those directly into the, to the theme style sheet, which is more stable. You know, for instance, you don't really have to, you don't really have to update a theme as much as you would have to wait for an update in a plugin and these types of things. So there's certain kinds of different reasons that you choose. So hopefully that makes a little bit of sense to you guys. Okay, cool. So I just dropped the um, the link to the Google Doc that's got our tested, silo tested themes into the group chat area. You guys should have that link. Everybody, uh, give us a one if you can see the chat area and that you can grab those links. Sometimes I send it to myself and think that everybody is on the same page as me. And it's terrible. <laughs> so I, I'm constantly talking to myself. All right, looks like everybody got that. No link. Patrick, you got no link? Patrick, open the uh, chat area, and you should see that link right there. You got to click on the chat thing. Okay, next question. All right, so this is also from Craig. Can I use a URL shortener like Bitly if client's money site page is on itsy.com and his e-commerce item he wants to target 
is like 30 crazy characters long, and then use dads. Hmm. Mr. Kelly, I don't see a problem with that. No. <laughs> no, there's not a problem. So a URL shortener is, is nothing more than like a, it's just a 301, so it's just going to channel your juice to the destination uh, that you're, wherever the URL shortener goes to. So with the exception of when you do 301s, you typically lose about 10% juice every time it does a 301 so you want to try and limit that because it's going to you know not maximize the amount of link juice you'd get if you're going directly to it but it's certainly an option to do just keep in mind that you're losing about 10 percent power now does everybody does everybody know what a link shortener is give, give me a one if perchance you didn't just want to make sure that we're not really that should be pretty much clear Okay, not too many people don't know what a link shortener is. A uh, link shortener is the ability to, to take a long URL, toss it in a service like Bitly or even Google. Google has a link shortener, and it'll turn it into a tiny thing, right? Okay, cool. So we're good. Now, what Jimmy's saying here, which is, I think, very interesting, he had to teach me a lot about that uh, when it comes to certain backlinking. By default, all of those link sh uh, shortening services are 301s, right? Okay, good. All right, so the next couple questions are also to ask questions, Mr. Kelly. <laughs> All these next ones? Okay. Yeah. Um, SueBell.me slash GreenSmoke. Do we create extra social pages than the root ones we already have for example, SueBell.me, Facebook, Twitter, etc. for the silos like GreenSmoke? So root Facebook account and silo Facebook account. If so, what names should they go by? Um, I mean, certainly, from my perspective, it's you're never going to go wrong with building more social accounts. You don't have to. I mean, you definitely do it for the money sites and things you're trying to rank. I'd even recommend it for PBNs, um, especially since you guys know how to set up, you know, um, which was the one that we showed them. You know, you have the one feed and you have the five iframe punch now and you also have, uh, you know, other social platforms. It's going to add more link juice. And the other thing with socials, it kind of gives you more of a feel that, you know, you should have some kind of social interaction, I think, even on backlinks going to the site. It's hey. a possibility to get traffic there, but it also tells Google that, hey, you know, this just is, isn't just a link, you know, they might consider it more like a real site at that point. So I recommend it, but it's not necessary. Jimmy, uh, there's yeah. a significant number of people that don't even understand the question. So let's go ahead and lay that. And, and for those of you who got the answer, several people that understood your answer. Um, can we just lay out the question a little bit, Sue? Like what can, sure. can we interpret that question so it's not garbly gook for the brand new guys? Sure. Okay, so I, mean, I was uh -huh. I was also having it. Uh, I also could have taken the question a couple different ways. So okay, well let's uh, let's give them a parameter. So what's the best way to unravel this question? Okay, do we create extra social pages than the root ones you already have for? This is the, what I didn't understand either. Is she talking about or he talking about the WRTS two one layers? Is that what they're talking about? So so on the SueBell.me site. Which I've completely redone in the meantime. Oh, yeah, it's gone. <laughs> um, um, there was a um, green smoke was a silo. Gotcha. And so the question is, do we create additional social pages for each one of the silos? So like in Facebook, would you create um, a social page ah, for gotcha. green smoke? Gotcha, yeah. That's a, that, that, the answer is it depends, which I know, by the way, is a terrible answer but generally not um, because for me, can I put my opinion, Sue, or because I, it could go either way. I mean, I'm not, I'm not telling them not to be creative. If you're, you would only do that if you had a seriously monster site. Like Sue and I have done that. There's been a couple of occasions where the site has been, you know, huge, like a huge commerce type thing. But even then you're dealing, if it's a WR1, generally speaking, the rule of thumb that we've seen in the field is that a branded Facebook page 
is if you're talking about a money site, you're talking about your commercially branded, uh, not, not only branded, but the site that you're targeting for money, you, it's a one-to-one -one relationship with your Facebook fan page and yeah, that site. He, I don't think he's actually talking about accounts. He's talking about pages within a single account. So am I. <laughs> okay. Yeah, I'm just saying generally speaking, we've seen less confusion for your market when you send them to a single page. For instance, you can have one Facebook like box associated with your primary account. That's just a better, I don't know if I should use the word branding. Let me try another word. It, it keeps your audience less confused. If you're going to send them for a unique fan page every time, now that depends on your business model. If you are an affiliate and you're selling a whole bunch of things and you've got unique products to every one of those things, if you want to go to the extra work to create a fan page for each one and, and sell them uniquely, it's not, it's not out of the question to do that. I'm just suggesting that uh, you don't create more work than, you can, than is financially viable. Why are we going here? Because I just wanted, I, yeah, I had a memory I was, of having multiple pages on our Oh, gotcha. Page. Yeah, no. They, I was just looking at that. Yeah. Okay. Okay, cool. Does that make sense, you guys? I mean, don't, the main thing I want to make sure is get one page working properly. And if you really have a monster affiliate site, like I, have, I actually set up one time an affiliate site that had five different Facebook and different social media accounts tied to each silo, but I automated them. And so what was happening there is that I, wa I wanted, I kept, I had a very high rate of publish. So the time when you might want to do that, Brad, is when you're, when you have some, you know, a lot of publishing happening. Oh, he was actually talking about accounts. My bad. No, that's okay. Yeah, I, I, I completely concur. I wouldn't do the separate account things, but there's no reason why you couldn't do, uh, yeah. particularly on some platforms. Like if you're looking at Weebly or something like that, then multiple pages can be a good thing, and, and they can be themed toward the silo. So that if you're looking for links and things like that. But when you're talking social media, yeah, I have to agree. Most of the time, social media... Um, you kind of, like with Twitter, you've only got one page. You don't yeah. have the option for multiple pages. Right. Yeah. And that being said, we're not, we're not, we will never tell you guys, I don't think anybody on this team, we won't, we will never tell you guys that this is the only way ever to do it. Because as soon as we say that, someone will pop up with a situation <laughs> where the exact opposite is the best thing to do. I think, you know, to answer your question also, Brad, I think I have something like 30, you know, Facebook treats page management as... A, uh, an agency-like effect. That means that if I created five pages, Brad, I could put you on as an admin to manage those. Okay, so like, for example, Sue can manage our theme Zoom pages and all that, and that's pretty good. Now, if you're doing stuff that's really, really crazy and you're, you're testing a market that's a little bit how's your father and you're not sure about it, you can open a separate Facebook account uh, just to hedge against your primary account. Okay, but generally speaking, it's a good idea to keep a one-to-one -one relationship with your money site, your accounts, and the account management of multiple pages. Hopefully that makes sense. So. I was, was going to add, you know, with your theming too, it can sometimes help because, <clears throat> you know, you have potential vis uh, real visitor traffic to come through those uh, different social accounts. Yeah. So, for instance, if your site was about pets, you might have a silo that's about you know, dog lovers, and then another silo that's about uh, cat lovers. And so you might just decide to do two separate um, social accounts in that instance just to target those specific types of people. Exactly. And that's kind of advanced techniques. And yeah, definitely. The variables are there, but let's just, you know, for now, the general rule of thumb for you guys is a one-to-one -one relationship until you start, you know, juggling five and six plates with other balls and a chainsaw. You know, you'll get better as time goes on. You can start figuring this stuff out, but generally speaking, a one-to-one. -one. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So, linking web twos together and category juice flow. It looks to me the last page, category three, missed out on link juice. How does it get more juice? Does everybody so, understand the question? I'm still trying to figure it out. Water root silo category, Weebly. Oh, this is from, all right, this is a DAS question, right? This is from the, uh, yeah, so this is going to be from, from Jimmy's image, I suspect. Oh, is that the image within Director Scott? Okay. Yeah. You still got that image, Jimmy? Um, I have one similar to it. Yeah, <laughs> we need to pull up the images that got used in, in the It should actually be in Director's Cut. Oh, here, um, I got it. 
I got it. Okay. Like, or you can... Software. Okay. Yeah, a couple people don't understand the question. Several people do. It's all right. We'll bring it around for y'all. Do I say? Yeah. Do I say y'all? You, you did. You've been talking to Jimmy too much. And it's just terrible. Okay. Horrible. Okay. So let's Time see. Time in Nashville. Do you want me to share my? Yeah. yeah. Let's go ahead and grab it. They blocked Let my. Let me know. Uh, we can. There you go. We can see it. Okay. So I think in this instance. I probably should pull up the other and just make sure I'm reading this right. <laughs> it's a little different here. Um, you've got a link in from Blogger. You've got a link in from Weebly. You've got another link in from Weebly. And so what yeah. he's saying is that the Weebly that goes to Category 3, it looks like it's missing out on the juice. Well, see... Now remember, with with domain authority stacking, the whole purpose that we're doing here is um, trying to build your trust flow as you go. So, for instance, your Weebly is a 97 DA, I believe, and then as you go down, they're typically lower. In this instance, it's not because we chose to link into, you know, our social properties at the end, but when you go in and you do your linking, because it's such a high DA. You know, so when your DA is already high, you're not going to be able to manipulate its trust too much more. <clears throat> so in that instance, you're more looking for a power play. Now, the higher the DA, the less link juice you need to to power it up, right? So you might need, in those examples in the videos we showed you where, you know, two or three links can boost up your PA quite high. And so when you come in and do your Tier 2, you know, when you start applying your social or your bookmarks or whatever type of other high DA boosting you're going to do to here, that's automatically going to power this up to then channel it to here. Now, of course, as you go down, it's going to power up even more. But, for instance, this one will still get juice again, even besides your Tier 2 links, because in Month 2, when we build out the second Weebly page, this is going to link to the Tumblr and go on, but when I do this one, I'm also going to link to the prior two pages contextually. So just as from here we link to this one contextually, when we do this one, we're going to do the same thing. Anytime I put this up, I try and reinforce the juice that's going back to the money site whenever possible. If I built a third Weebly page, I'm going to include these two again or a fourth Weebly page, you could do these two again. So, and then I just, you know, anytime there's a new page, you interlink them, just like we showed on the video, to keep pushing those contextual links back to these pages that link to your money site. Hopefully that is what answers that question. Okay. So you guys all go build those. You have, a, you have five minutes. Go. We'll wait. <laughs> Okay, so let's take a right. look. Let, give me a one if you guys have a general understanding. Let's just take the first thing. A general understanding. Shane, you've already got a copy of this mind map. It's inside the director's cut. Oh, Shane, you were the one who said that you didn't, you haven't fully looked at the director's cut. Okay, so you need to go in there and look. That diagram is pretty much covered. We do have that in there, don't we, you guys? If not, this diagram actually... Do we, if not, we'll get it in there. Yeah, we should probably get it in there. Okay, everybody's, that's a resounding yes to everybody. We've got a wall of one streaming up. All right. Okay, that's a please, that's a please, okay. All right, good. Does everybody understand the verbiage that Jimmy is using? The Uh-huh. I'd uh -huh. wanted to add, you know, somebody's asking why don't you use a different property here. Well, I mean, you can. You know, the idea is to pick out those high DA sites from, you know, in that example we gave you the list of the moz.com slash top 500, I think, is the URL string. Um. And, you know, you're just looking for high DA properties put in here because what you're trying to do is push that trust flow all the way back through to your money site. So with each link, it's going to collect more trust flow as it goes, but it also builds up your juice. You know, it's going to build that PA also as it goes. So okay. you don't have to use a Weebly right here. 
<clears throat> you know, with, with each cluster you do, you should be switching up all of these properties. For your, this is just an example of one cluster, and in the videos we say, you know, you're supposed to use three clusters really to rank for, you know, most of your local and and uh, medium keyword type type stuff. Okay. Yeah, like <clears throat> you could swap this up. I mean, this, a Tumblr could be here. A Weebly could not be in here at all. You can just go through that list, and and you know what you need. You know, you need a high DA. Has to be able to be some type of blog type site so you have to have the ability to go in there and add links to wherever you're going so okay we have a couple of people have asked the same question wouldn't the purple arrow point to uh, subel.me and not green smoke no because in this instance we're trying to okay so even on Facebook you know so on your main Facebook page you're linking probably to your main site. So you're probably linking to suvel.me. You're talking about the profile, but, right? Yeah, but on your actual Facebook page, you'd want to share a post or something that actually shares this URL so that your target is then going to there. Same with Twitter. Twitter will probably be linking to your main money site here. But in an individual tweet, you would tweet this specific URL because that way you're, you're targeting that juice back to here. So Gotcha. Yeah, there's another thing to be clear was we're not necessarily talking about only profile pages. There's the prof there's the profile on Facebook, but there's also the status update area. All of that stuff passes juice, you guys. Okay, so we're looking at building the whole, you know, passing that juice to the specific things you're targeting on a thematic basis. Cool. Okay. Should I take the next question? Yeah, let's move on to another question. Um, by the way, Sue, I'm getting a few people that uh, have said, I haven't looked at Director's Cut, I haven't looked at Director's Cut. Um, I'm, I'm presuming that means that you haven't had time yet to dig into it and the rest. Um, you might be a little bit, not lost, but this is a Director's Cut question and answer. So we're going, we're going to, we're assuming that you've had the opportunity to actually do the training. So we'll do our best, but we're actually not going to backpedal outside of that frame. Uh, so my suggestion would be is that since this is recorded, everybody will have access to it, and we'll do our very, very best to, to include everybody here. Uh, you'll have access to it, and so hold some of these questions if you haven't watched anything at all until you've completed that, and then a lot of the questions will make a lot more sense for you. Yeah. Okay, exactly. cool. All right. One blog to rule them all and iframe stuff, first and second videos that we did. Several customers, they do not use WordPress, mm -hmm. but several have blogs associated with their site. Mm -hmm. Absolutely, you can use that with the blog feed. Yeah. yeah. That sometimes works better than if WordPress is their main static site. Mm -hmm. The feed's not going to change so much. Right. So um, a lot of the stuff that we did with the uh, one feed is, um, is going to work better with an active blog. Mm -hmm. So number two, when setting up the system, do I have... A new Hootsuite account for each customer. Mr. Wright. I'm sorry, I was distracted. Can you repeat the question? When setting up the one feed, mm -hmm. do I have a new Hootsuite account for each customer? Oh, <laughs> well, there's a, um, I'm presuming, is actually this doesn't really matter if they're local or not, I'm presuming that you have multiple, you have to ask yourself, I don't know how you personally, the person asking this question does business. Um, but I like the opportunity if the customer wants to take everything with them, and I would want them to, okay, you have local clients. I would want them to take on the charges. I don't really know how. It depends on how you're running your, your agency. Generally speaking, if you're going to control all that and you want, depending upon your model, if they leave and you don't have them welded to your hip anymore, then they lose all those connections. That's one way to handle it. Other agencies say, hey, we set this up for you. You know, you can take it when you go. So it really depends on what kind of business you would like to run. I prefer to run businesses where it's very difficult to leave, but that's just me. Okay. The other model is to say, hey, we build this for you. It's included in the package. You take it with you when you go, um, and we will, you know, you can take over the account should you leave and not have a monthly recurring with us for your broadcasting. Does that make sense? So it really de it depends on what kind of business you want to run and how you want to do that. I've done it both ways. If I have somebody who I've set up a very large network with Sue and Jimmy 
uh, we set it all up and we presume, for instance, for instance, when we build them, a large network type thing, uh, we build that with them having complete ownership. They're purchasing the entire thing as a product and therefore their email and ultimately even their credit card should be in the Hootsuite account. Does that make sense, Brad? Okay, so it depends on you know how you're selling your product. I mean, how are you selling these connections to them? Well, yes, Brad asked, so does that mean that you do need a Hootsuite for each client? And again, I will say it depends. If you're going to give it to your client and they're going to walk away with it, then yes. If you're paying, going to charge them recurring as a service and it's part of the things that you do and you don't tell them, then you can have multiple clients in one Hootsuite account. I have both. I have something like 90 accounts in one Hootsuite account and four of those are client who are, you know, they know nothing about how those things are connected. But I also have five to six Hootsuite accounts independent that I still manage for the client, but should they leave, they walk away, okay? You can have up to 100 connections in the Hootsuite account, and please be advised that Hootsuite is one method of connecting that we show you in the event, but it is a pretty solid and robust way to go when you're dealing with clients who really don't need anything more than the basic Twitter, Facebook, you know, that type of thing. Does that answer it, Brad? Is that good? Does that cover it? Depends on how you're going to sell it to them. Okay, awesome. Okay, we can move on. Okay, so the next question is, do you need a social explosion account for every client? The answer is no. Um, I would probably, in, in fact, at the moment, it's better if you don't because um, you can only have one social explosion account per PayPal. Um, we have a pro version of social explosion coming. It's been mapped out and will probably be here in about two to three months. Um, and then it'll be easier, you'll be able to get specific reporting for each one of your clients. Um, for right now, I would just, you, you can take a look at what the usage is going to be based on uh, what the frequency is and how often they post. And so I would build clients out appropriately that way. Number four, do I need to have a stupid account for each client? Yeah, it's the same, um, same question that Brad was essentially asking. Yeah. Um, Again, I want to reiterate, this is a client business model. This is an agency business model question. The answer is maybe. How are you doing business? In other words, how are you selling it? Are you selling to your local clients uh, that's just something that you do? In other words, when you walk in there and they're filling out the form, you say, you know, would you like, you know, social signals, blah, 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 would you like us to broadcast, you know, these posts? And they check yes. Are you... How are you handling that? Are you, is that part of the package that you just handle? You know, if that's the case, that can be part, your agency might purchase a Scoopit account. The, the master Scoopit has 12 magazines associated with that. But if you have 70 clients, you're going to use up 12 Scoopit themed pages pretty quickly, aren't you? So you really do need to decide when, first of all, folks, give me a resounding one if you understand that you must charge with this stuff. <laughs> this is not this is not so oh I have to do this oh, I'll just you know stack it on with what I'm already doing you know because whatever it's just what we have to do now no you must charge for this this is a you know it's not even appropriate to say would you like fries with that this is way more than that would you like a <laughs> I can't even, you know so <laughs> would you would you like a Absolutely. It's like a five star hotel with a you know so the main thing here is just remember, if that's how you're going to sell it, uh, there, there is a model where if I were to give you true confessions, my true confession is <laughs> I do it both ways. I partition an account for each client in case they need to walk with their material, but I don't make a big deal about expressing that. A lot of them don't care. They just want to make sure that it's under control. They want to feel like it's under control. So in the event that we ever needed, I ever needed to evacuate them or they just moved on or whatever, which happens, um, then they can easily do that. Then you just swap out that information and they take their stupid account with them. And the benefit of that is that you can actually have them paying for it, you know, depending upon how you want to do business with them for these things. So to answer your question is you don't have to have one for each client, but you're going to use up your master account pretty quickly. So probably the best practice is, is if you're trying to run a real agency is to have a one-to-one -one relationship with your client and the setup. Okay? You know, this is actually an interesting question and it is slightly different from the HootSuite because the HootSuite behind the scenes, like it ties your 
platforms together. Mm -hmm. Whereas Scoop It and the other social platforms is actually something that the client can see if they go looking for their content. Sure. And the interesting thing about it is if you start a new Scoop It account, it's going to have high domain authority, but it's going to have low page authority. Yeah. Right? Because true. it's a new account. It's true. So, but there isn't anything that says that you can't re-scoop their stuff yep. onto an older account yep. that's got high page authority. Yeah, right? and you guys so, and they better charge for that. <laughs> right, exactly. I mean, for you know, see what Sue is saying is literally true. You could have a reserve of several dozen Scoop It pages like we do that have a domain authority. The domain authority of Gillom Scoop It service is something like ninety now, but some of our pages are up to sixty. I wouldn't just give those away to clients. You know, I would assume that the client wants us to develop the domain authority. So be sure, be sure to charge a lot, you guys, if you're giving them domain authority. Don't be afraid to charge for the authority that they get from the things that you've already got. Uh, the other thing, Absolutely. the other question has passed by, as someone said, I think Jonathan, I can't remember if I met Jonathan Stack. Uh, sounds familiar. But uh, isn't Scoop It used to power up PBNs? I understand selling it to a client, but we don't, but we don't still need to use it. Uh, you can use it for whatever you want. Uh, it's a great way to power up anything at all. I think when we, we did our information for the director's cut, specifically, we were not speaking to PBN in terms of scoop it. We were showing you uh, the 5 by frame punch. And the 5 by frame punch is most commonly used for broadcasting you know, content from your money site. But there's nothing saying that you can't use scoop it to power up PBNs. I mean, you can power up whatever the heck you want. Does that make sense, Jonathan? Okay. Yeah, another question. That's actually Brad's next question. Too, yeah. No, it, yeah. No, set up for the money side of the PBN. Right. And I, I understand that we toggle a lot between PBN and and money site. So you know, feel free to to create a distinction if we're not being clear on that. Just remember that as as Jimmy uh, talks about a lot, and so does Sue. Juice is juice, and power is power. So whenever we're showing you anything that generates power and passes juice. Just remember that you can do, you can use that to whatever evil means you you see fit. Just don't blow yourself up and follow the best practices that we're laying out here. Does that make sense? Okay. Another thing that uh, someone has asked here is um, which Hootsuite package would we recommend? Again, when we when we provide recommendations that of things that are not free, I'm very very cautious. My answer would be please, because I don't know your business, your model, and how successful you are, and what your cash flow is. I don't want you to to get buy more stuff that you don't need. Try playing around with the free account. Start playing with the free stuff. Okay, and, and check it out and then follow the maps that Jimmy has given you. Look at the way the juice flows. Look at the way the link authority flows and the trust flows and then make a decision about what you might want to do there. Okay. All right, so the next question, number six, I think we kind of beat that one already. So I'll skip on to number seven. Does the RSS feed Give us a backlink. So let me just show you. This is the RSS feed from NetworkEmpire.com. And as you can see, there's not just one link here, but there should be probably 10. And each one of these is a link back to an individual post on this site. So wherever you put the feed is going to be a set of 10 links. And the cool thing about it is that those links rotate as you put in new content, right? So um, so yeah, it's not just giving you one backlink, it's giving you 10 backlinks, and it's giving you those 10 for every time you put it someplace. And when you put it in someplace like um, a feed directory where other people are going to pick it up and, and use your feed, then it goes quantum pretty darn quickly. Yep, absolutely. Can we use, the, can just, we use this? For, huh? I'm sorry, I was just going to answer that one. Go ahead. Can we use this for PBNs, or is this in lieu of PBNs? Ah. So a lot of the things that we show you here, the, the one feed and the 5 iframe frame punch and domain authority stacking, you can actually use that in lieu of PBNs when you're in a local market or a market that's not terribly competitive. You're going to find that past a point, um, that's not going to provide you with enough oomph to be able to get you ranked, and then you're going to want to bring in a little bit more power. Here's a great question. Yeah, I would say with anything national, you're going to have to definitely bring in PBNs into the mix. But I know with the DAS stack, I mean, you can rank with that with most medium keywords and most any kind of local keyword you can think of. So, 
Here's another uh, related question back on the previous question about um, scoop it. There's two major questions on scoop it. Um, one is, do you need to power up scoop it with GSA and all these other things uh, in order to build the page authority on scoop it? That's a great question. And everything that you're learning from Jimmy and Sue on powering up and the, the best, the current best practices and standards that you have learned and will continue to learn from us uh, is applies to everything including Scoopit. I would also say that one of the things that makes Scoopit slightly unique than other power-up platforms is um, oftentimes your articles that you scoop there will get scooped by other magazines of the same topic and theme on their own because they're related. And if those pages already have high page authority, they'll pass that on to you directly. That's why it is kind of a weird anomaly compared to other things because it's, it's kind of like this giant community of people trading cards like, you know, trading cards, like, remember baseball cards? And, you know, their favorite players and topics and themes are kind of just, it's a really weird curation environment. But the benefit of that, which most curators are not paying attention to, is that if somebody starts curating the topic that you're in, then they pass all that juice back to you. So now you know what they don't. Hope that answers your question. Um, I'll also say this about GSA and mm -hmm. um, some of the other yeah. masks. Um, linking applications that are out there. Uh -huh. I would not put that this close to my money site. Yeah. Google's looking at links, two links back. So they, if you've got, what you do with GSA is you can have spun, spun content. and I mean, you can shoot yourself in the foot pretty darn fast. And for a long time, it's been don't put GSA right smack to your money site. But at this point, I would say don't put GSA um, on a one hop to your money site. Okay. Uh, how far back would you put that, Jimmy, do you think? If you were going to use something like GSA? Or do you just say don't use it at all? No, I mean, I will put it back to tier three and four with GSA. I don't put it within the tier two range. Um, there's a lot of if-then situations that we've tried to update in our GSA course. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I do. in general, it's tier th tier three or four is where I'm putting GSA. Okay, we need a we need a word magic detour for a second here. Acronym magic. Okay, people are asking. D A. What does D A mean? Uh, Shelley, D A means domain authority. Okay, and we we'll def we've defined those for you in the director's cut. G S A is an acronym for a software tool that was widely used in the early part of 2014 in which our best practices have changed, as per Greg Morrison, Jimmy Kelly, uh, Sue Bell, and that's what Sue is talking about. In other words, if you don't know what GSA is, probably don't overly worry about it. It has gotten, can I say that, Sue, that it's more delicate to use because you don't want to get too close to things? It's easier to blow yourself up. Can I say that? Or Yeah. I think, okay. um, can I just show, let's just show people something. Yeah. Because this be sure. easier yeah, let's than do it. trying to explain it. Yeah. To, Go for it. Grab the screen and go. Uh, let me pull this up real quick. Christine has asked, no GSA on YouTube videos. Uh, <laughs> it's not as safe as it used to be, I'll tell you that much. Jimmy would speak to that one. Okay, so, and this goes back sometimes to, like, how we're showing, like, how... Juice flying. Hang on a second. Sure. Yeah, we don't have. Uh... Grab your screen. Yeah. Yep. Okay. So, when you're looking at this, so we have the water damage Cedar City, and all I did was upload this video in the account. I didn't do any link building to this whatsoever. Okay. So when you come into here, and this is just a small example of what you can do. Okay. So let me open this up so you guys can see this. This this is another little trick you could do with YouTube videos. In case people didn't know. <laughs> Just for fun. Okay, so how can you get some of these things to rank? So when you're looking at this juice, so this URL here, if I targeted this with links, then all of these um the green on this screen means it's a do follow link, right? So the green, so if I if I 
if I power up this URL here, so if I hit this with links, it's going to power up juice to each of these. So I could be really spammy on my channel URL, and in turn, that's just going to be one link from this URL, but once this is super powered up, it's going to move these a lot easier. Now, how did I get that one video to rank? Well, you'll see that this is a nifty little trick you can do. You can create a friend, and you'll friend their channel. I can actually spam the crap out of this channel. In this instance, it could be like a pseudo channel or a, you know, some kind of YouTube channel you don't really care about. And this is a do follow that passes back over to this, to this one as well. So by powering up my other channels, like, got, it gets to the point when you just go and do a, when you go and you you put up your <coughs> video, they'll just rank by themselves. You don't have to actually apply any links or anything. Did you just say so, spam the crap out of? I'm just kidding. <laughs> <laughs> um, so. So yeah. that's something to keep in mind. Like, pay attention to like. Let's let's take a look at a Twitter account too. So this might help clear up some of the DAS stuff. Hey, I thought you weren't going to give this one away in the director's cut. Oh, <laughs> never mind. I need a Twitter page. Let's see. Not mine. I'm just kidding. Uh, Twitter.com forward slash Jimmy Kelly. Let's just pick someone out of here. Let's do the, the U.S. Postal Service for fun. <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay, so let's say that this is your um, this is your site, right? So the, the same concepts apply here. So let's turn on the green. So when you're looking at this, you have the URL here, which is, you know, whatever Twitter account you ended up using. But then this is your individual tweet, right? So this goes back to what we're talking about here. Let's say this is this instance here. When I do a specific tweet, I can turn page here. So going back, so if you click on this, this gives you another URL up here that is this own unique tweet URL. And obviously somebody's been doing some link juice building to this. But you can see that that's a PA76. I mean, this is a pretty strong page. Yeah, very. And then they didn't put in here like a URL shortener. So a URL shortener would then pass that juice back to the money site. This is something that Social Explosion does automatically. But it's something important to realize like when you guys are looking at these properties. So like if you talk about using GSA, well, I know that this individual tweet, if I do a shortener, is one tier away. You go back to the other one. So we go back to the original Twitter URL. This would be tier two. And then if I apply GSA, then GSA is on tier three at that point. So hopefully that gives you guys um, a little bit idea of, you know, maybe where you can be a little more spammy on the tier three and four levels. Gotcha. Give me a one if you guys understand the sheer power of what it is, then you understand, like, you could practically implement this. Give me a one if you guys understand exactly what to do. Okay. Lots of ones, few twos in there. Some people are starting to come around. What you guys are seeing here is quite implementable, but also pretty advanced because the thinking has been done for you about how the, the link shoes should flow in order to help you power up whatever you decide to power up. Excellent. Lots of people saying, wow, this is amazing. Uh, Oh, <laughs> people, somebody's asking. People are asking how you turn on the green. Yeah. So this, so this is that Moz plugin yeah. right, that you can go download that we put into the director's cut. That's just if you click on the little pencil option, you can just select the green, and I'll show you the do follow. And yeah. if you do pink, it does no follow, which are a few down here. Oh, that's what Liz meant by turn on. Sorry, Liz. I thought you were asking me to just send you some money through the screen or something. Turn on the green. Okay. So yeah, we're talking about the the Moz plugin. Sorry, there's a lot going on here. I've never seen this many questions ever in a webinar. We are literally getting about a question per second. <laughs> All right. So Twitter, Twitter technically, so your actual Twitter page that most people create depends on if you're linking over to your site. So like you'll see in this instance, you see where my red arrow is. On yeah. your Twitter page, you can link to your own site. So in our example, it would have been subell.me right here. 
but then to channel that to a specific page, we would do a tweet specifically for the page we're targeting, and that's going to channel that juice over to that specific URL. So when you link to it within DAS, I don't have to link to just Twitter.com. It can be that specific tweet URL. It doesn't have to be, um, you know, your home Twitter page. Now, Jimmy, I have a question for you. Since Twitter automatically is one of the few social accounts that does this, redirects to a t.co, in other words, they have their own link shortener for everything, would you, on that main profile page, would you put a direct link to, like, Sue? Dot me, or would you do like a, a link shortener, or just is it fine to just direct link because of the link shortener? Um, because of the link shortener, I usually just like to use theirs. Okay, gotcha. Um, T does. But yeah, I mean, you could certainly if you have to remember if you're putting a different URL shortener, then that's technically another tier because it's a three of one. Right, exactly. So that's one of the things. <laughs> well, that's one of the things I wanted everybody watching to know is it's kind of weird. Twitter automatically turns every single link anywhere on their domain into a t.co link shortener, which is a very high-powered link shortening shortening system. And there's all kinds of evil madness you can do with this, that too. That's quite unexpected that we'll get into in future webinars. But point is, just remember that you know you don't want to create another tier by putting a link shortener within that. So Jimmy, here's a question for you. So you should not. Some people, a couple people are kind of freaked out about the GSA thing. So the, he's saying I should not, Tom is asking, should we not GSA the direct Twitter page anymore? The big Twitter page? Well, I'm not necessarily saying that. Mm -hmm. It depends on how, so it, there's rules of thumb that we have in our course, like if this, then that. So if it's a nofollow link going to whatever you're going to, then me personally, I just, GSA it because a nofollow link will not hurt your money site. Most social accounts on the main pages do a nofollow. There are a few that do do follow. The ones that would be a do follow link to your money site, I would not GSA the crap out. Of. Gotcha. Gotcha. Okay. Yeah, Don, we got you covered. This is being recorded. It's fine that you just got here. I'm glad you made it. Excellent. Wow, so many questions, so many questions. An extra right. any, is there, here's a great question, Sue. Um, is there any extra benefit of using Google's link shortener over others? Jimmy, Sue? No. Not really. Okay. <laughs> Jimmy, do you have an opinion? Do I hear? Yeah, I think, yeah, in, for, for Google to pick up the link faster. Okay, that's one thing I noticed when you were hanging out with us, that you would actually... When we were trying to get something indexed fast, you would use that. And that's one of the reasons why we do use it in Social Explosion, everyone, because uh, we mix it in there. It's a pretty good link shortener. But, it, you know, like Sue was saying, it's not, for the purposes of that, it's not necessarily a higher priority. All right. So, next question. I have a blog that I created on Rapid Water. The site that I created has a blog that pulls information from blogger.blog. Each uh, time my client writes something. So we can't see anything, and I can barely understand you. Really? Mm -hmm. All right. Hang on. Sue so and I had a late, late, late night last night. We were up strategizing. Well, I, think it was just, I think it was just in the, uh, the pullback. Can you hear me now? Uh, give me a one, everyone, if you can still. Yeah, I can't see your screen either, Sue. Um, came and went your screen for me as well. I have no picture. No picture. Dang. Let me just try it again. We're Is it there now? No. Okay, let's see. I guess one of us could take it. Okay, everybody, thanks. We 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 you know we got it. Really appreciate your feedback. They really freak out when your screen's gone, Sue. <laughs> Thanks, guys. Here's a great question I can answer while we're doing this. Uh, so can I go on Twitter, find a relevant high DA, and reference or tweet it back for juice? Yeah. <laughs> you can. Um, Absolutely, you can. <laughs> That's the whole point. Good job, <laughs> Janine. It, it worked. Let's, get, let's get, get a congratulations up in here for Janine. She just had a, a light bulb moment. <laughs> Give us a so, one, Janine. 
Go ahead. So, Russ, why don't you grab the screen if, if no, we're, can. you're back. Oh, okay. Very good. Yeah. I think off was on and on was off for some reason. It's one of those days. Uh, all right. Um, yeah, I'm trying to like not do too many questions out of the list. Otherwise, as I as I move over here into this list, I'm not going to have a clue what we answered or didn't answer. So I'll remember. Okay, good. Go ahead. Um, so, who is this? Let me make sure I'm on the right screen. All right, Brad, still. Have a setup that he created on RapidWater, realmac.com, created that has a blog that pulls information from Google Blogger.blog each time my client writes something on the Google blog. It's posted directly to their website. Just so you know, in my humble opinion, that's backwards. Hmm. But that's okay. All right, that's fine. If they're more comfortable blogging on Blogger, and then you pull it off a of Blogger and you put it on your your actual money blog, that's fine. Huh. Um, that could be a little bit weird, though. I wouldn't do that. What's going to happen in a minute? Like, it's not. Um, thoroughly enforced right this minute, but I would say probably six months down the road, is that because the original post was actually on blogger.com, that's going to become the authoritative post and not your money blog. But, um, and so what, what's going to end up happening is the one on blogger will rank and the one on your money site will not. It, it won't even, it, it might eventually not even get indexed. Um, okay. But we can cross that bridge in another minute. In the other cases, can we set up the blogger account for clients who do not have WordPress sites and use the RSS feed in this scenario? Um, yes, absolutely. You can set up a blogger account for clients that don't have WordPress and use that RSS feed in exactly the same scenario. I just I don't recommend it because what happens if they're blogger account, like that's their Google account, right? What happens if Google decides that their account is outside terms of service and they close the blog down? So for example, part of the terms of service on blogger.com is that you're not supposed to advertise products. I know people do, but if your competitor decides that they don't like you and turns you in, boom, your blog is gone. Maybe even your whole Google account is gone. Yep. And so if, if that is your source of income, your client's source of income, that they're going to be pretty unhappy with you. So, um, so while you can do it, I don't recommend that to be your primary. I, I never put my money site on somebody else's platform. Yeah. That's just me personally. I know guys, they have their uh, entire income stream off of a Facebook store or off of a Yahoo store or something like that. Ouch. But again, it's just like what happens if, if something happens to that, like we could, your life? We could tell you some stories, <laughs> but we won't. Um, but you know, if if um, if you got to go down that path for a moment because it's easier and you're trying to overcome the friction, then then go for it. But just like realize that it really doesn't take most of the hosting companies. They've got an auto setup for WordPress, and um, you know it's ten fifteen bucks to buy a domain name. And, mm -hmm. Seven bucks a month for shared hosting, and Bob's your uncle. You you can be up with a your own domain in pretty short order. Yeah. So all roads, right. and you can teach your clients so that. Myself. You can teach your clients that all roads should lead to your own golden frame. We have a yeah. word. We have a word here at the precinct called golden frame. Golden frame means that you own it. It's on your. It's your platform on your. You know you have backups. I mean, how many of you guys have a backup of your entire Facebook account page, right? You just don't. Okay, so that's what we're saying. Is I don't even know how to make it. <laughs> well, I do, but you, you don't really, like, you don't, and it's not work, but that's not the point. The point is that I know. you should really, all roads should lead to your client's own golden frame. And clients start to notice when you actually explain to them what's going on, they actually trust you more. Because everybody has this kind of sense of ambiguity, you know, of, like, where's their data a lot of clients that I worked with, you know, don't have a lot of online knowledge. I'm sure you guys are really familiar with that. And some of them even feel they have this looming sense that at any moment stuff's going to disappear anyways. 
So try to help them make sure that their worst fear is not realized. Give them a sense of security, actually, when you're at the table with them, when you're negotiating, when you're closing, when you're communicating with them. And you'll find an amazing amount of trust gets built when you take the time in very plain English to describe uh, you know, how you're keeping them safe with the contract. Okay, so the last question here in the Google Doc from Jonathan. In the intro profile set up in more section, <clears throat> excuse me, are we supposed to set something like this up for every single PBN we have? Gmail, for PBN, Twitter? No, we talked about that. We covered that with somebody else's question. All right, so back at the ranch. Dang, this is just really small. Let me see if I can enlarge it. No. That's terrible. Shoot. All right, so we were here with Jonathan's questions. Um, if we have a PBN of about 15 to 20 sites, so you get a network of 15 to 20 sites, what would be the best social explosion package? Would the be, be the best thing to do is send social explosion to the RSS feed rather than the actual posts itself? Um, you're going to get more diversification out of the actual posts themselves. And as far as the best package, it depends on how much you're blogging on each one of those PBNs. We actually have a calculator. So what I would do is, at your 15 to 20 sites, um, figure out how much you're, you're blogging on those sites, if you're even blogging at all. I know a lot of static, a lot of PBNs are static. And then we've got this calculator over here. It's social explosion um, calculator. WPSocialExplosion.com slash calculator. So let's say that you blog on average, um, pull up my other kind of a calculator here, hang on a second. Let's say you blog on average on uh, 15 to 20 sites. Let's say you got 20 sites, just a round number. Let's say 10 of those sites you blog an average of three times a week. The other 10 you blog an average of five times a week. Okay, so that's 10 at three, that's 30. And 10 at five, that's 50. Altogether, that's like 80 blog posts a week. So 80 blog posts a week times four is going to be 320 blog posts a month. So if I were looking at 320 blog posts a month, let me just come down here. 320 blog posts a month. And let's say that the frequency and duration on these, let's say I just wanted to do Twitter on low and low. You just kind of want some activity going in there. Let's say I don't have any pictures in those blogs because they're auto-blogging and there's no pictures, so I'm not even going to bother with Pinterest, but we'll do delicious on low and low. Then the package I would need would be the 4,000 monthly credits. You're going to have an average of 2,000 promotions a month. And, um, you know, I might even go, as I look at that, that's like, that's actually twice what you would need under those sets of circumstances. So I might adjust something up or down a little bit. Um, you know, maybe you could go with a, get a duration that's a little bit longer. So you get more links per. And then, oh, that's too much. So you can play around with this, and it'll tell you what you need and how you can fudge it. And if you, so for example, let's say that, um, that this is 4,500 promotions that I would need. And I could still go with the next package down, and there would just be some of the blog posts that didn't get all of those um, social signals each month. But, you know, your blog on the whole would be fine. So does that make sense? Give us a one if you guys understand that there is a calculator and that we can help you determine how to use it should you decide to go that route. Okay, everybody understands that, Sue. We got cool. a wall of ones. Excellent. <clears throat> um, the intro video seemed to assume that people were already OMG members and had access to your advanced training as opposed to new members of Only Director's Cut. We don't actually have any training in um, the standard OMG. And we tried to make everything that we did in Director's Cut stand alone. So in other words, I know that the, we referred to PBNs in there a little bit, and the PBN training is actually in Project J. Uh -huh. But we're going to come back and, 
and flesh a little bit of that out, as um, yeah, most, Jimmy mentioned earlier. We're going to get with Greg and do a couple of videos. Right, yeah, most of what we were referring to was some of Greg's early work. We had to take into account that a significant portion of you have are at least familiar with it. For those of, the, of you that are not, uh, which we asked at the beginning of this call, um, there's just a couple of basic terms and definitions. And if you're not familiar with the PBN, then some of the best stamp, best practices are not really important to you, at least yet, because you don't have them, which is fine. So you can still incorporate the 5 by frame punch and domain authority stacking uh, without that knowledge. Does that make sense? Okay. Excellent. All right. So Paul asks, can you cover the basics of what RSS brings to SEO? Is it power, trust, or both? What would you say, Jimmy? Great question. Being way too quiet. Repeat that question, please. Can you cover the basics of what RSS brings to SEO? In other words, is it power, trust, both, or what? Both. So let me bring up my handy-dandy diagram. Excellent. <laughs> Hold on a sec. Um, where would I go for that one? Let's see if we got a simple one in here. And obviously, you guys will have to change screens again. Okay, I'm answering a few of your questions by text uh, that are coming through. I'm trying to snag some on the way by here. Okay, so where is where's my screen share? Uh, we have several desk questions. So long as you have that um, diagram up, I think it'd be good to answer. So go for it. Okay. So when you create your blog feed, and that feed, what Sue was showing you a little bit earlier was that that if you go out and promote it, that's going to give you links back to those specific pages on your site or those those posts on your site. So let's just go take a look. So we can go look at uh, feedage, for example. And I know some of these take accounts and some of them don't. I mean, they sometimes they go in in and out for. Okay, so for example, if I went and I submitted my that RSS feed that I have and put it out on this property, like feedage. This is a domain authority of 73. That certainly fits. That can certainly fit into the DAS stack. So if you can imagine the way one of those clusters looks, this is kind of like exponentially growing that cluster, if that makes sense. So once you have your RSS feed in here and you go in, those this will be feedage.com slash whatever URL it ends up being and you look at those items in your feed, those are going to be links that also go back to um, the posts or pages of your money site or wherever you pulled the feed from. If the, does that make sense? Give me a one if that makes sense. Okay, it looks like we have a lot of people understanding it. Any twos if it does not? Kinda. Brad's giving me kinda. Okay, there's a few people that don't understand. Can you try it one more time, Jimmy? Because I feel like this is a key point in concept. Yeah. Um, okay. It's, uh, okay. So you have your money site feed, right? So this is this can be like subill.me slash feed and all WordPress sites have this. Okay, so we could take that feed, and when you look at a feed like Sue showed you, you'll have links that that go back to it. So um, the titles that are in a feed display the links that go back to your those posts or pages that are in your feed, you know, however you set up your feed. Uh, typically, they're posts by default. So let's say I take this feed, and I can take the subill.me slash feed, and I can submit that in this instance on uh, 
feed byte, which has a DA of 76. But the cool thing with submitting it here is it generates a new URL. So um, let me just make this a little bigger so you can see. So it would be feedbyte.com slash Sue Bell or whatever you end up calling the feed. Okay. So now, instead of that just being your Sue Bell feed, you have those same title posts that are coming in that are links that are going directly back to those pages on your site. So hopefully that makes more sense. Give me a one if you understand that or if you want us to go into that a little bit more. Okay. A lot of people are real. Okay, there's a shoe drop for a few people not. Light bulb moments. Light bulb moments. And the thing is, folks, if you don't know what an RSS feed is and you've never been involved with one before, that's probably going to be a little bit weaker. So we provided you with some information on the video. Make sure that you watch the director's cut. The main thing to understand is the RSS directories that accept feeds and all kinds of other cool things we show you how to do with the feeds in the director's cut. Uh, that's going to build backlinks for you and pass juice. That's the essence of what Jimmy is saying there. And there's all kinds of there's all kinds of ways to accomplish that. Okay, all kinds. This is just one of many feed outages. Only one example of the domain authority. Uh, Zenith has asked RSS feeds links go back to the money site. Well, if you're using the RSS feed from your money site then when you submit them, yes, they will be pointing back to the wherever the, whatever the feed link is on your feed. So when WordPress creates a, an RSS feed, it's always just giving a link to the post and or page, depending upon how you've set it up, uh, that has been published live. And so that creates that feed. And so when you send it to third-party locations that accept feeds, it republishes them, but it republishes them within their golden frame. For instance, if you stick a three feed through feed adage, Feed Edges has a domain authority of 73. That means you're, get a do you're getting a domain authority of 73 backlink with, of course, less page authority, but you're still getting the domain authority. Um, and I won't mention that how Jimmy increases page authority for feeds. We'll talk about that some other time. The point here is that you're, everything you broadcast and publish on your WordPress blog is going to automatically juice up your domain. It's like pretty much semi-automatic domain authority stacking. It's a good start to really getting you guys juiced up. Makes sense to you? you? Can understand what we're saying? Give me a one if that if that little monologue helped and two if you guys want me to shut up. That makes sense? I got no twos. Is there any twos there? Oh. Nice, they got so, it. You know, okay, cool. This is this is an example. Luckily this was one of the example ones we did. Um, but when you look at this, um, you can see that this has its own unique URL, right? So this, the feed from Network Empire, we submitted to feedage.com. Okay, so now look at the domain authority on this. This is a 73. So now this URL is linking back over to your, to your individual money pages. Do you see that? And so this is a backlink to all these items within your feed. That you can see those right here. Does that make sense? Yeah, sure does. For those that are fantastic. Now I did have a question here again for Director's Cut. We talk about a few things. Jimmy reviews a few things. I review a few things. So does Sue. That you can do with RSS feeds. But I can also see the light bulb moments that seem to be coming down the screen here. Uh, I've had some of the similar questions. Wait a second. So. The more aggregators and locations that I put my feed, the more juice I get back to my site. Yes. <laughs> y E S. Light bulb moment, everybody. Let's give it an enthusiastic one saying, wow. Everybody give me one if you get that. Of course we're not going to show you every single RSS location in the universe on the first round of director's cut, but you get where we're going, right? It's pretty huge. And you know what's weird, you guys? Everybody here in the audience is taking this time to come here how few people actually know this and it really matters like you know as you as we begin to build on these techniques and systems suddenly you know what's going to really freak you guys out is like you'll start listening to Jimmy 
regularly and you'll understand like exactly what's in Sue and you'll understand what's coming out of their mouth. They go like, well, of course, you got to stack the, you know, it'll be second nature. Once you understand that basic fact with the RSS feed, everything else starts to make sense. Now, Heather has asked what several other people have asked, which I think is a really, really great question, Sue. And if you don't mind, I'm going to address it. Now, I haven't talked to Mike or Greg or, or Jimmy or you about this, so just will you pause me if I start to go off? Okay. Okay, cool. Um, how do I charge for this kind of stuff? How do I charge for this kind of stuff? And I will answer you this. Many are the ways. What Sue and I have done, and Jimmy, what we have done as a company is before we got completely sold out, we would actually sell the setup as one price point. You have to decide how you want to, you guys want to do that for your own agency. But please know that this stuff is not necessarily included in with just the stuff that you've already done. Like, for example, if you were back in Day Job Killer or any other things that you've done. This is not stuff that is automatically included in for clients, is it? Right? Everybody say no. So you should charge for that. You, you should charge for that separately. I'm not going to put a price point on this today, Heather, because I haven't talked to uh, any of this, the team members about talking about that. But there are different price points. We charge. Uh huh. I, I can say that I've seen a lot of, you know, some of the things that you taught through uh, the Hootsuite account and things like that. I mean, there's a lot of companies out there that charge like a thousand or fifteen hundred bucks just to help promote stuff on their social accounts. Yeah, I no, mean, no question. And we, and that's what I wanted to be really clear here, you guys, is, is to remember the setup fee of doing the plumbing. It's like the plumbing in your house, right? That's not even turning on the water. The water is actually your content. Now, what Sue and I did, we had the we had content broadcasting services network Empire, and we're currently sold out. Um, we charge anywhere between $400 and $2,000 a month to publish content, and we don't even create the content for the client. That's just publishing it and making sure that all the water runs through the house. Setting up the plumbing, which means getting the RSS feed, setting up the locations at the RSS feed, in other words, all the pipes, right? All the plumbing for that RSS, we charge separately. So there's usually a one-time setup fee for the RSS. You know, you can charge anywhere between $50 to $1,000, depending upon the size of your RSS locations, right? Now, we did not create a paint-by-number, you know, how to add this to your agency thing for Director's Cut. I mean, I'm not close to that option. I'm just saying that that currently does not exist. So if you're interested in something like that, that would be something that you'd have to, you know, talk to, you know, about it in the chat, talk about it in the Facebook, you know, in the group here. Uh, but generally speaking, the main thing I want you to walk away with, with whatever you do with your agency, Getting the content, making sure the content is published to those locations is one price point, and that's recurring monthly. Making sure that the RSS feeds are set up, uh, generally speaking, we charge a one-time fee for that with maybe a little bit of a maintenance thrown in with the rest of their service, or you can include it in. So that's as far as I'll go with that today. But just make sure that you, you create those distinctions. Setting up RSS is not publishing to RSS, okay? Now, this is a great question from Paul. Is it possible to see how RSS is having an impact to show the clients are running RSS scheme? Yes, it's called One Feed Supercharger. Oh, sorry. <laughs> um, um, we have built a plugin that Sue and I are, and Jimmy are sitting on today. We're in some. Uh, actually, I'm not sure what the phase. I won't even speak to that. We're, we're in. We're beta testing it. We're. Uh, okay. We went back to the programmers and requested a couple mods on, okay. and we should have that back this week. With mm -hmm. luck, knock on wood, we'll have that ready to go public by the 15th. And the reason I'm excited about your question, uh, who was that, Paul, uh, is because there are almost no RSS uh, solutions out there that will actually interface with Google Analytics or other analytics systems. Sue has written, a, and Jimmy have written a code so that we can track the clicks, the actual traffic clicks, to your RSS feed. So remember that traffic is only one aspect. Do you guys get traffic from RSS feeds? Yep, depending upon where you syndicate and where they go. Sometimes you cannot account for all the locations. RSS feeds, take it from us. I'm not gonna tell you how we know this, but we just do. RSS feed is one of the number one ways of jacking and utilizing contents further out in your network, because it's basically content. And so a lot of the times your RSS feed will be begged, borrowed, and stolen and republished in other locations. Most of the time that ends up pretty good for you as long as you've turned off the, the full content. Make sure that your RSS feeds are set to excerpt, folks, in your blog. So everybody, give, everybody give me, this is really important, give me a one if you understand how to turn your RSS feed in your blog off and leave it on excerpt 
and not on full content. If you don't, it's a big deal. Uh, it's a big deal. You know, it, it's, um, I have to say, if, if you set it to excerpt, you're not going to get your images in your RSS feed. So it's mm -hmm. Well, how do you want them to handle that? Well, then why did we um, tell them not to do that in the director's cut? I mean, it's in the video. That's why I mentioned it. Do you want us to change the, the video? We, we were talking about one feed, social, uh, one feed supercharger. That was where we set that up. You're talking, oh, specifically only about one feed? Yeah. The, the, the regular blog feed we left as the default. Oh, but we haven't even ex explained uh, one feed. Oh, I see what you just did. Okay. Um, and now we most certainly confuse them. Okay, yes. we, we were just talking about two. We were just talking about two different things. I was talking about your general blog, your general blog, like your your one your your money site. And you're talking yeah. about the use of the one of the one feed supercharger. No, I'm I'm at, well. What we referenced in the, the videos was one feed supercharger. So if they're we using actually... if they're using one feed supercharger, you want it doesn't matter if they turn their money blog to excerpt. We didn't tell them whether or not they should turn their money blog to excerpt or not. Yes, we did. And all I'm saying, okay, so, so then let me put it this way. Mm -hmm. If you're running your money blog feed through something like Google mm -hmm. and, or, yeah, through something like Google and you want your images to post to, like, Google and Facebook, then you want to leave it on full. Otherwise, those images will not post. Uh, I think we've lost visual on this, and I think it's important. Can you bring it back? Looks like we have Jimmy's screen now. We have had Jimmy's screen for a while. Mm -hmm. um, let's just let's not go with um, like, like let's just leave what we did in the videos there and not go into an extra like what they should or shouldn't do with their blog because I think that's just going to confuse the issue at this juncture. Okay, let's back way up. I'm going to back way up to where that weird departure occurred. Let's back up way to yeah. the thing that I was excited about. Okay, um, guys, don't worry about what just occurred. We are going to make sure that you're 100% clear. What I wanted to say is that what I think it was Brad or Mike had mentioned that he wanted to see how can he prove results to clients. The cool thing about one feed supercharger, and we're going to have very clear instructions on everything that Sue and I were just deliberating about, okay? The cool thing about one feed supercharger is that you will be able to log into your Google Analytics account, and you'll be able to see if you've actually got traffic uh, from your feeds that are out there that you would have mixed with the one feed supercharger. So we're going to get you clear instructions on that as this plugin launches, okay? So that's the main thing I want you to know. Ignore the excerpt process for the moment. So that's one way. Another way that you can tell, uh, Brent, I think it was, uh, is that you'll start to see, as you start doing the feed work, like when I do feed work with Jimmy and Sue and I see things happening, you start to see the domain authority uh, and the page authority start to increase overall, or the, mostly the domain authority through the site. So that's another example of if you're tracking that kind of stuff for clients, you know, you, you would be able to say, hey, okay, here's an impact that RSS submission and one feed work has had on my website. Would you agree with that, Jimmy? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, you got to consider a feed, you know, with that picture. You know, when you're looking at DAS in this example, this is like a, you know, this is one link inbound. When you're looking at a feed, that's like a collection of 10 links or, you know, even up to 20 depending on your settings. And that could be 20 links inbound to the site at once. So it's, you know, it makes a big difference. Gotcha. Here's a question coming in. Uh, somebody who considers themselves super green, going through the director's cut video, will it uh, will it ramp up my understanding of SEO in order to be effective with local client consulting? Uh, yes. Uh, hopefully, David, you can see the impact we're talking about here. We've just shown you how to build massive DA automatically through RSS feeds. Do you think um, anybody who thinks that would actually increase your ability to support local clients or pretty much any kind of client in the industry, give me a one. And a two, if you think it's crap and it's useless. I better not say any twos, otherwise I'm going to tease you. Use your name, but <laughs> we got literally hundreds of ones coming down here. And that was a great question, David. I really appreciate it because it's not all the obvious. I know it's not obvious the kind of power that we're talking about here. Um, and Sue, this is a great question that I would like you and Jimmy to address that just came up a minute ago. 
And that does relate to David, who is obviously dealing with local sites. There's uh, lots of local search agencies in here. You can still apply. Would you guys speak to applying the one feed and RSS to maybe static sites? Like that was a question that came up earlier. Like, well, one of my client's local sites is not, you know, they're not regularly publishing content. Should I still submit my RSS feed even as so it's a static one? You know, what, how would you speak to that? Sure. I mean, you've still got entries on your RSS feed. You'll get links to that. It just won't rotate. It won't continue to publish over time. So they don't have the benefit of frequency of publish, or what we call FOP, but it will continue to put juice out sure. there. So that one-time submission is still worth it, is what we're really saying. Yep. Okay. Jimmy, do you okay. have... Okay. Wanna... Uh-huh. Go ahead. It's fine, Sue. Go. Um, just trying to get through. So uh, way back up, Jonathan asked a question. If we have a customer site that we want to DAS, and it does not have the recommended silo structure, and they don't want to change it, can we still use the DAS technique? Sure. Say absolutely. that again. So if, if they, there's a customer site, it's not silo structured, can they still apply DAS to a non-silo structured site? Yeah, I mean, you can. It's just not as, remember, like when we were talking about siloing, I mean, a properly siloed site is going to make it so you can use 80% less links. So, yes, it'll work, but just know you're going to have to do more links um, if it's not properly siloed. So, just keep that in mind. Exactly. So, the next question, Das, when you're stacking, are you pointing to each silo category or subcategory? Back on your image. I am pointing... These can even be, okay, so these could be separate categories. So this whole site could be about green smoke, for instance, and then these might be my individual categories. This can also be just one silo. In this instance, this could be one silo because green smoke would be the top level silo page, and then your supporting pages are just underneath it. So it can be either or, but you're going to see more of a bump um, if it's all within the same silo. Right, so you would do a death stack for each silo, is what you're basically saying. Correct. Cool. But it would still work, just not as effectively going to the different silo pages. So many pages, right. Yeah. Cool. I would say particularly if your silos are um, of different topics, then you probably would want to keep all your DAS stack in a single silo. So if you've got like a, a peanut butter silo and you've got a chocolate silo on one site, um, I would have one DAS stack for peanut butter and another one for chocolate just because of, of the thematic relevance between all of these inbound links. All right, the next question, another one from Jonathan. Do you use the same account each time for different stacks? Or do you create unique accounts for each stack? I try, whenever possible, you know, so if, I, I recommend using different properties on each of your clusters, right? So I would use this one again, you know, the, maybe the same Weebly account if it's for a different client or a different um, you know, money site. I, I wouldn't want to keep, I wouldn't, I don't want to put too much weight under one account because let's say, you know, you put up some content that the reviewer doesn't like when Weebly comes by. So usually with new accounts on Weebly, if you put up like really garbage stuff or really heavily stuff that's trying to promote an affiliate product, sometimes they just will shut down the account because they don't want that kind of stuff on their, on their site. So um, you know, you don't want to put too many accounts in there because you might have an instance where a reviewer is going to come along and not like what you have for that particular uh, Weebly site, and if they shut it down, then that just killed like 10 of your Weebly, um, you know, sites that you were working on for your DAS cluster. So whenever possible, I try to diversify the accounts. Yeah, I do uh, agree with that. Different emails as much yep. as possible. Yeah, I do agree with that. And that's the question that was at the beginning of this call uh, specifically was addressing Facebook which is a much, much, much lower risk than all that stuff. Nonetheless, if you are 
Facebook, we, we mostly use Facebook and some of our more advanced systems for traffic, but the DAS is really there. But So if you, you know, we I recommend diversifying the social account as well, especially when you're, you know, you've got a lot at stake. Okay, so Brian has a question specifically. How would I use the techniques to rank Amazon sales pages, both on Amazon and Google.com? And I would have to say, I'll let Jimmy answer this question too, but I would have to say the techniques that we have shown you are generic ranking techniques, and you can use them to point that link juice to your Amazon page or to your money site. So to rank is to rank. Wouldn't you say, Jimmy? Yeah, I would say, like, if this was an Amazon, then you're probably only going to have just one target on this. So you're, you're not going to go, and because uh, Amazon page is like a 90-90 DA, it can handle more link juice and a little heavier optimization on your keywords. So you could just take, all of these would just point directly to that Amazon page yep. in lieu of the silo in that instance. Good. All right, so a quick question about Hootsuite from Leo. You mentioned that you'd recommend keeping a separate Google account for separate videos. Would it be okay to have one paid Hootsuite? We covered this one already in mm -hmm. a different yeah, area. We did. Jackie has a question. When building the cl cluster, we are leaving the home page untouched. It's only getting power from Facebook, Twitter, Yelp pages. Oh, that was a question. It, is it only getting power from Facebook, Twitter, and Yelp pages? Or should we do something else at the same time to the home page? Huh? So when, when you build well, a certainly. cluster, is, are there no links in that? And we talked about that too. We said that the Facebook, like the account pages from the social media are going to have links that go to the home page. But when we're actually building the death stacks, you, you want those links to go to the deeper pages. Right? I didn't mean to cut you off. Sorry, Jimmy. Oh, no. I mean, so typically, you know, like DAS, because it takes time to build out, depending on how you do it, I like to try and target specific keywords. When I look at a siloed site for, for this, so let's say we have other silos. You know, we could have V2 SIGs and... Uh, you know, bullhead smoke and other other brands are associated with the e-cig market, um, and they would be their own individual silos. If I apply links to subel.me, um, you know, I'll mix in some PBNs, I'll do some press releases, certainly send social links to it. Um, I'm trying to do because the juice that you power up with what we we're showing with how the juice kind of flows, because of these silo pages, these are all going to get the most juice from this home page. And so I tried to just power these up in a sense that juice is juice, and I'm just trying to, um, you know, pass that on to some of the more important silo pages on your site. So it's more like a branded play more than anything. So a press release will be, you know, URL links or the brand. Um, you can do bookmarks. You can do... Um, social links like Twitter, Facebook, shares, stuff like that, you know, giving us a, a good quality signal from Google saying that, hey, people are interacting with this site. And then these are more for targeting specific, um, your DAS cluster and PBNs are more targeting specific keywords you want to move in the SERPs. Cool. All right, so the next question from Jackie, she's got a one-month-old domain. It's an SEO consulting business in Toronto, and there's a lot of pretty heavy competition there, the domain authority between 45 and 65 on the front page. What's the best way to go about powering up the DA trust of her new domain, and how long should she expect it to take to get to that level? I would have to say it actually depends. Um, the best way to go about powering it up, I mean, if you're going to want to get to a 45 and 65, like that's, um, 
you're probably going to have to go with something stronger than just um, the 5 iframe and the domain authority stacking. Well, depending upon the feed and uh, the power of our scoop it pages. I would, well, to I hit would a agree. DAF, yeah. To hit a DA of 65. Yeah, that's, that's pretty huge. Pretty, yeah, you're right. Yeah. So, um, so yeah. You, that's something that we teach at CERT. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, exactly. And and even if you were applying all those methods, how long would it take? It, it depends on how um, how much content you're putting out, how aggressive you are with your your linking campaigns, what it is you're doing, how much popularity you can get, and um, like you know, each link that you build is going to give you a particular kind of oomph back to your site, but there's a lot of variabilities in all those things. Is it a default link? Is it a nofollow link? And what's the actual trust of that site? So, um, if you're green to SEO, it's going to take longer. Um, probably, probably you're not terribly experienced. Obviously, if you had a site that you'd gotten up to DA65, you'd have a better idea of how long it would take. So when you don't have as much experience at building the links, then it's going to take you longer. Then when you've already done it a few times, then you're kind of like, oh yeah, we'll kind of go in this way or that way. That's going to be more effective for what it is that I'm trying to do. It's, um, it's almost impossible for us to give you a step-by-step -step because each market is different. And so where you get the links for that particular market um, that it might be the most effective because your most effective links are going to be do follow links that are thematically relevant, right? So, um, so when you come in from a huge site like let's take YouTube.com or Weebly.com, there they have pages that are about every single topic imaginable, and so the thematic relevance there isn't as powerful as it would be on a site like. Um, Moz. If you got a, a link in from Moz where their whole stuff is all about SEO and online marketing, then that's going to be a whole lot more thematically relevant. And so even if the DA on that site is a little bit lower than, say, YouTube and Weebly, it's going to give you more oomph for your rankings. So, yeah, there's just a lot of unknowns in that kind of a question. Um, in the DAS Weebly RSS stack, our next question, um, in the DAS Weebly RSS stack video coaching, after I'm done with the three tier one properties and the inner pages and home page is not moving, if the home page at that point is not moving, should I add more tier one properties or concentrate on tier two to support the tier one? Where can the PBN power best be utilized here? When you ask, the ask that question. What's that? What? Say that question again. Okay, so this is kind of like a two-part question. In the DAS Weebly RSS stack video coaching, after she's done with the three tier one properties and the inner pages and the home, if the home page at that point is not moving, should she add more tier one properties? Or should she concentrate on the Tier 2 properties to support Tier 1? And also, where can the PBN power best be utilized here, pointing to the home page or the inner pages um, or to the high DA properties? I personally, for me, I'll focus on the Tier 2 first and see, see if that will kick it in. Um, the other thing you want to make sure is that the things are getting indexed as you go along. So you're counting on each of these properties in here to actually get indexed to help with that link juice because let's say you were going through your through your chain here and let's say let's say your blogger doesn't index for some reason while you're building your links that's going to leave a huge gap as far as the trust flow goes for what you were building so you want to make sure that these are indexed and then if I'm still not ranking within that time frame I start applying you know, other 2.0s and those types of links back to this one or, you know, each of these. And if I'm not there yet, I usually just go and do a PBN or two or 
then I'll add in more other tier one type properties to put in more of a mix in there. So that's usually my process. Cool. All right. Paul asks, when joining RSS feeds, would you join the RSS feeds from related Web 2.0s into one feed? And I would say yes, unless those two Web 2.0s um, are going to have the same content coming from the same money site. So in other words, I've got themezoom.com or networkempire.com and that networkempire.com RSS feed I feed out to um, to my Google Plus page and I feed it out to someplace else and they both have an RSS feed. If I take those two feeds and I feed them into one feed, if I use Yahoo Pipes to, to combine them into one feed, then it's going to have the same content in there twice because it's all coming from my money site. So, so long as they're related, they're, you know, they've got the same types of content, that's great. But if they've got identical content, that's not so great. All right, John asks, this is another question for Das, Jimmy. The best, what's the best way to use DAS to rank a non-WordPress site or a static WordPress site? Same thing. Well, you can still use, yeah, the, the, same, the same thing will work. I mean, if it's not siloed or anything, just know it's going to, it might take more than the three clusters like we talked about in the videos, but it'll still rank. It'll still move for what you're wanting to do. So in that case, I just switch it all to to this page, like all links would come inbound to this, or I might go in on that site and just do some interlinking, like how we show you to do on the Weebly, I'll do some interlinking on the money site to at least try and get some, that'll provide me with additional targets, even though they're not siloed, to help spread that link juice around, and then contextually I'm going to link from the new page that I created up to the main page I'm trying to move. Well, Chris has got a great question. He says, would you use DAS just for the money site, or would you also use it for your PBNs? Because you're not trying to rank your PBNs. I do both. Um, this this method works wonders. You know, when, when me and Greg have teamed up to do things together, applying DAS behind the PBN is just like nuts. So, okay. And then you can also use either PBNs or DAS to rank the property individually as well. So, Or likewise, you can have PBNs, instead of applying more 2.0s here, you could hit these with PBNs. So they're very interchangeable in that sense. All right. So um, I have... Melanie asks, I have Sindwire with all my social media accounts set up for my money site. Will Social Explosion work in conjunction with that? Yes, absolutely. Um, Shelly asks, oh, she's talking about the download page. Okay, cool. Um, Jen, question is on Google Dashboard. Would you recommend a separate profile for my main affiliate business and my SEO biz that's getting established? Both related to me, so I'm not sure. What do you think, Russ? Mm, so let me have that one more time. I didn't quite get my head around it. Okay. The question is on the Google Dashboard. Would you recommend a separate profile for my main affiliate business and my SEO biz that is just getting established. Yes. They're both related to me. Uh, why? What's the business model? Can I would need to know a little bit more. Like what is the, okay. is it an affiliate, is it a general affiliate program for ClickBank products or is it an Oh, wait a second. Let me think. Um, if you, well, keep in mind that the biz pages, it depends on how full on you want to go with each business model. I keep things really simple in this regard. And yeah, speaking to also uh, agreeing with also what Jimmy has already said, that diversity is a best policy with social media when you have a lot of diversity happening. And, and it's very helpful. So, for instance, you can create a Google Plus biz page with one Google dashboard. And by Google Dashboard, hopefully those of you who have seen, 
director's cut, we're talking about google.com forward slash dashboard, which means whatever you're logged into. Um, if you plan on doing the whole wide net for both businesses, then you may want to consider uh, doing a unique one. It is possible to create the sub-social media accounts for your affiliate business separately and just build a Google Plus Biz page that's separately branded to that. But I would need to know a little bit more uh, about your whole entire business model. But as a general rule, it's not a problem because the Google Plus Biz page will be held separately. But depending upon how much hardcore SEO, how much domain authority stacking, and what kind of risks you're taking with that network, uh, I would uh, diversify if there's if you have any questions at all. I would just create a separate dashboard. That's just my way of doing it. I like I agree with Jimmy. I try to hedge when I can, uh, but depending upon the size of my network and what risks that business is taking. Yeah, the interesting thing is if you have two accounts and you decide at a later point in time to combine them, you can. You can. Yeah. However, having one account, you can't. You can't. That's separate. a great point. You can't go backwards. So begin with the end in mind, and at the end of the day, when in doubt, diversify. For so many reasons, there's just so many reasons, the biggest one being you can't really go back from that. All right, so the next question, when you have four or five silos, what do you do for DAS? Do you continue your properties to the left, linking the last one onto the right? No, you're going to create a different stack for each silo. Um, Paul's question, is Snap redundant if social explosion is installed and pushing out to Twitter? Um, if you're using social explosion to push out to your individual Twitter account, then yes, Snap would be redundant in that case. David asks, totally new to SEO. All right. I answered that question, actually. That's kind of a personal question. John, when referring to PBN, does that mean that it's and does that mean its entirety or each blog slash site in the network? Oh, you know, I think we kind of refer to those interchangeably. Um, a PBN can either be the entire network, but, but most of the time when we talk about a PBN, we're talking about a site on the network. So David asks that same question. All right. Um, There's a few questions in here on if this, then that. Uh, I know that a lot of you have seen that. Um, and the answer that one of us gave was, yes, you can use that. We don't go over it at all in Director's Cut. Um, I don't consider it to be better. Then, it, you know, there's a lot more options uh, to use within that. But something we, didn't de we definitely did not cover in Director's Cut. One thing I will tell you is one of the reasons we, we could have chosen any type of connective service, we chose Hootsuite because it, actually doesn't require as much authentication. For example, using if this then that, you'll frequently have to go in and re-authenticate. So it's a little less stable, just as a sidebar. Melanie asks how we can get the OneFeed Supercharger in the Google RSS tool. So the OneFeed Supercharger, as I said before, it's not quite ready to come out. It'll probably be about two weeks. Um, the RSS tool, do you want to drop the sales page to that? In the, I'm pretty sure that we put sure. the sales that link actually in Director's Cut, yeah. but just in case not, we can drop it here. Are we speaking specifically um, about the Google Plus RSS Maker? Yeah. Okay. Sure. I'll drop that. And oh, this is cool. Do you recommend putting Scoopit and other social bookmarking services through a one feed process? <laughs> <laughs> Naughty. Um, yes, now you're starting to see the power. <laughs> it's what we're not saying um, <laughs> outright, which right. is very powerful. <laughs> um, it's turtles, turtles all the way down. Yeah, and the, the, there are definitely aspects of the one feed. I typically don't do, um, we've got like a 50 some odd step one feed process which is the full-blown thing. And I typically don't do all 50 steps for all third-party platforms, but I would take the platforms that are the most prominent and put them through one feed just because that helps to raise the page authority on those individual accounts and that helps to push more juice. It, first of all, it helps to get those items ranked better. It gets them more traffic on their individual platforms and it also makes the links that get 
that go back to your money site and worth more. Yeah. All right, and so that, Shelley asked. That was a great uh, question. I don't know if we even covered that in the video. I think we did, but yes, Scoopa does have an RSS out. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We we covered that. Did we? Okay. Fast. Okay. It was a little yeah. A little fast. Okay. Um if RSS contains feeds from other sites, not just your own, is there a reason to do this? You know, the reason why I do it is twofold. Um, I have clients that tends to not publish as often as I would like for them to. So if I mix their feed with somebody else's feed that um, perhaps has a, a more a higher frequency of publish, then when I put it out to places like feed directories, it's more liable to get picked up because they simply look more interesting. They've got more stuff going on and going through. Um, because when somebody picks up a feed off of a feed directory or off of a search engine and they put it on their site, what they're looking for is fresh content. And so if my client's not publishing, then their feed isn't going to provide fresh client, fresh right. content. So, so that's why I, I'll braid in somebody else's um, feed. Mm -hmm. All right. So That was a huge point. I know she slid over that pretty quick because we have so many questions, but that's a really huge point, folks. And that speaks to a question we answered earlier um, about you know, submitting even a static site. So is there a way to, to, I mean, would you recommend braiding, you know, active content within the same, same thematic thing on static site, RSS initial submits, or does that not make a difference? So, you know, that's one of the reasons why in the one feed supercharger, I've got that option for sticky posts. Got it. So okay. that, um, yeah, or, or when I braid, actually when I braid content, when I braid it that way, Actually, even when you braid it in Yahoo Pipes, it's still going to make sure that you've got content in there from both feeds. So, yeah, both both work just fine. Okay, yeah. gotcha. That's that's great. Um, and the, we'll get into the sticky at top function of one feed supercharger. This is not a one feed supercharger webinar, but we promise we'll show you the power in that because that. Now that I think about it, that will be quite relevant to those of you who might have a static site that want to pull that RSS. I, I never even occurred to me. I know it occurred to you, Sue. So even even but. But the, the content will still be there, even yeah. without the sticky stuff, got it. so yeah, it's yeah. all good. So it's not yeah, I had to think static. about that. There were two, two hours into this webinar, my brain is Yeah, it's static. Sorry. That's all right. That's um, okay. All right. So, slash feed, is that a WordPress site only function? Yes. So that's part of the WordPress um, software. They, by default, they have um, the feed showing up in slash feed. So other CMSs and obviously HTML sites aren't going to do that. Is there a Zoom control? That's just about viewing the thing. Okay, we'll be answering questions. Is the slash feed just for the home page? No. What if we have a page that is a blog? Oh, I see what you're saying. So if your blog actually sits someplace else, so let's like let's say you got www.mysite.com slash blog, and that's where your blog sits, then your feed is going to be www.mysite.com slash blog slash feed. All right, question for Jimmy. Could you explain again about trust and its proximity to the money site? Oh, ha, 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 ha. No. <laughs> no, we can't. <laughs> <laughs> also, I have a kitchen remodeling client that needs to rank in Chicago, DA of 20, PA of 33. What would you do? <laughs> Tough competition. Yeah, I'm sure. Yeah, you know, I, I don't know that we can yeah. actually get into to terrible specifics. I mean, if we start going down the path of, of doing specifics on what to do for each individual site, we're going to get, we'll never get out of here. It'll be, so, longer, it'll be longer than a Google Hangouts. Yes. You could, you could always bring it on our monthly webinar meetings if you would like, though. Yeah. That's, um, when we go over those new sites Okay. for Network Empire. That's, yeah, that's not, um, yeah, that's not, that's this. not actually director's cut. No, we're not supposed to drop um, this. <laughs> um, all right, so back to her initial question, Mary's initial question. Can you explain again about trust and its proximity to the money site? So, <laughs> trust is, I mean, that's that's a basically 
why we do the DAS stack the way we do. We want to get the trust as close as we can to these money sites. But because these are all high DA, there's usually a correlation that they have high trust. Um, right. So, and we're trying to collect that as we go down by sending these links down through. We're collecting that trust, but we're also s still trying to stay within one jump of the money site wherever possible. And anytime you get more than four jumps, you're starting to look pretty spammy. Um, if you guys get a chance to go through and read that uh, trust rank paper that was done by Stanford, um, yeah, if I've, you're into the geeky stuff, that's that's a good. You'll understand why this is built kind of the way it is. But you can see there's no more than four jumps. You go one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. But even then, remember this is one jump away from the money side. So we're trying to maximize that trust flow all the way through. So that's kind of the difference between just doing standard tiers. You know, a tiering thing would just be like these properties here on the right, and then we'd just be building to that only. But the further out you go, the more spammy that is, and it's not going to push as much trust. We're not we're not staying one jump away from that money site, which is going to maximize our trust as much as possible. So it's kind of a combination of the two, um, you know, powering everything up, but also trying to keep trust as close to the money site as we can. So, Got it. Excellent. So Heather, Heather has, yeah, thanks for that. So Heather's got an interesting question. So this is what happens if I have a client site that does not have slash feed. Um, if it's a block and it doesn't have a slash fade, um, there might well be something the matter with the block. And more than likely there is. Yeah, so I have ever seen that on more than one site. Um, and it's just like something got messed up with the uh, in the database or in the, the program or something. So what I would say is try the one feed supercharger here when it comes out in a couple of weeks, and if that doesn't help, it used to be a couple of years back that there were all kinds of plugins that you could install that would give you all options for your feeds, and I went looking for those back about the time we decided to build one feed supercharger, and I couldn't find any of them anymore. So one of the reasons I had to build this plugin. So I would say try one feed supercharger here in a couple of weeks, and if that does not create a feed for you either. Mm -hmm then you're probably going to want to do something horrible like extracting all of your data and recreating your block. Yeah, which would be, that can be done fairly easy with softwares like xml-sitemaps.com and others. You can do that, but it's not the, you really don't want to do that if you don't have to, okay? You want to be able, you want to be able to have an ongoing feed. It's best practices is to, you should be able to internally generate your ongoing power, right? Because it really is about as automated as it gets. So if you are missing that feed, yeah, sometimes you'll see, I don't know, you guys might use different plugins like Yoast sitemap generator, which is different than a feed, obviously. But sometimes sitemaps and, and RSS feeds break internally. Oftentimes a reinstall or, uh, you know, there's some kind of folder permissions error that might cause that. So, again, you'll need to get some technical there's help. A, there's a plugin also usually that will fix it if you have an error with it. Excellent. What's, what's the name of that? Called. Okay. We'll try to drug um, something I'll, up for you. I'll look for it real quick while we're on here. Okay. Okay. Excellent. <clears throat> so the next question is from Peter. What if a client site is not WordPress? What's the process using your training if I want to do client SEO and there's no WordPress theme, no plugin to use? Um, you know, quite often for my clients, I'll create a blog form anyway. Um, what I tend to find is when they're not in WordPress, particularly if they're in a different CMS, oftentimes it's not conducive to good SEO, and like just just the format itself has got really poor um, optimization for search engines, and so trying to rank it, I've gone down the path of trying to rank it, and depending on the amount of control that I've got over it. Um, like if they're HTML pages, then I can get there. Like I can edit the HTML pages and, and get what I need. But if it's another CMS, it's almost impossible. So I'll just build them another WordPress blog, either on a subdomain or on an entirely different domain if they don't want it on their subdomain. And I'll just use it to market them and just kind of circumvent the whole thing. I'm a big fan of circumventing my clients. Yeah. <laughs> don't, don't get her started on that. Um, guys, wherever you, like, 
not not to speak badly about clients at all. That's not what we're saying. We're just saying like don't put you know in gaming theory, don't give the opportunity for them to hurt themselves, right? So make sure that they're able to uh, they don't have to do anything super technical. I'm going to insert a question real fast here, Sue, that I can just answer really quick. Um, okay. In the director's cut, we mentioned something called short codes UI. This is Don Roberts. Um, short codes UI, he was saying he was having a hard time finding. We didn't add a link. I'm going to go ahead and drop that to you, Don, but I'm going to drop it to the entire community here. So that mm. you have it. it's just as free WordPress download. Okay, I'll drop yep. that in there for you, the entire audience. Cool. All right, so Shane says that Fletch has mentioned <clears throat> that he's generating a 60 to 80 month income, probably. Probably there's some significant decimal point in there that's missing um, from his plumbing site that originally he made in 35 minutes. He then did some SEO on it. If I'm interested in doing this for real estate niche, what training would I be watching and what software do I need? Um, let me give you, know, you if you're talking. Let me give you Fletcher's address. It's one four. <laughs> six, just kidding. So, you know, if you just... And if you like his direct line. No, <laughs> <laughs> no just kidding. Local, local is pretty easy to, to rank for, and the stuff that you've got here in Director's Cut will give you everything you need to be able to do that. Right. So I would just start at the beginning and, and follow all of the instructions here. All right. Yeah, real, real estate is very different than plumbing in terms of what we call a total market value, or a TSMV. But the principles will be generally the same. We've got Janine who would like to know what the semantic web is. Yeah, that was quite. A, that was towards the beginning. Oh, you're going backwards through these. I get what you're doing now. No, I started at the top and I'm coming down. Oh well, geez, we're going to be here a while. Did you? Um, did you um, well, answer that question already? Well, no, we didn't. We decided to. I, I just feel cautious about uh, getting into the semantic web. Um, can you? Can you guys give us some feedback? Okay, so uh, let, let me give you just a, a two-word definition sure. or a two-sentence definition of what the semantic web is. Um, the semantic web is a way of marking up your content so that machines understand what your content is about because language is not an easy thing for a computer to understand. And so by adding additional tags and by having databases that those tags refer to, Machines can then understand what your content is about and how it relates to other content that it knows about. Yeah. So it makes for a, an intelligent system. Yeah, and, and real quickly, if you wanted to show them, like I have had some useful results in just showing people like the rich snippets uh, function. Like for example, I have that up now. Um, Generally speaking, what that when it comes to the real world and what's working now, you can just use something called the Google uh, Structured Data Testing Tool. So I'll go ahead and drop uh, here. You can grab the screen and show it if you want. I was. Uh, well, I don't really. Can have... I can I add something while he's pulling up that screen? Sure. I, here, I'll shift it to you. Rest. He's probably um, trying to uh, find it. Yeah. I, I would like to add. You know, Google is moving more and more towards really wanting to know that you're a real person, place, or thing yeah. in the search. So they want to know that. You're an actual business. They want to know that you're selling an actual product. They want to know that you're an actual person. And these are going to start becoming more and more important as the semantic web comes into play as far as your rankings go. It doesn't mean yep. that it can't be gamed, of course, but... Take your black hat off and stick it in the corner, Jimmy. Yeah, Jimmy, you're a very <laughs> naughty boy. You are a very, very naughty boy, cutting you off. So what... But what he is referring to is that because the semantic web allows you to define yourself and your products, then it does, um, and, and it's verified um, manually by people who sit around and verify those things, that it's then possible for Google to use that as um, trust factors. All right, so. I can't even tell if I'm on or off or I don't know. Yeah, I can see your screen. Oh, but what do you see? As I like form. I see the webmaster tool structured. structured. Oh, okay. Testing. Good. Not sure what monitor it was on. And and the porn sitting right behind it. Good. Yeah. Well, that's on the other monitor. Okay. All right. Okay, just kidding, good. guys. No, I'm not into that. Okay. So, uh, 
Have we been on for three hours or is two hours? No, it's only been two hours. Two hours only been two hours. Yeah, see, now we have the five-hour Google Hangouts to compare our, all of our go-to meetings with. <laughs> this is, like, not good. We're just slowly <laughs> creeping into, like, the home shopping network where it's just, or CNN. It's just always on. Okay. Um, <laughs> okay. Uh, Joshua's here. Oh, Mr. Fletch is here. I was going to. I'm glad you're not, you weren't here when I gave your phone number out, Joshua. Um, so in a nutshell, the, the uh, Rich Snippet tool, which I'm going to drop for all of you. I'm actually going to drop this whole thing, and it will take you guys right to the Rich Snippet. You can put any website in your thing that you want. So I just put in jimmykelly.org site, which I built for him, so don't hold him accountable for that. I've been trying to work on it. But you can see that it is uh, semantically marked up more or less. Okay, so you can see the preview. What you generally want to see is you don't want to see a lot of red on this page. So if you see data that's wrong, you'll, Google will come up and say, hey, you're missing this, or you try to do this, or worse yet, there's a redundant header or something like that. But generally speaking, this is the beginnings of a site that's marked up. It's missing some important functions, but that's what you would use this tool for. So you could put a site in there that was not marked up, and you would see challenges. What you really want to avoid is getting red marks on this, or worse yet, not having something marked up, okay? So I'm going to go ahead and just drop this as be an example of one that started. I have some of the, some of the schema. You can tell right here, schema.org webpage. The theme that I'm using actually uh, accounts for this as a main content of page, and you can see that it's count, uh, each schema has a type. And this is what Sue was saying earlier, that um, in order to talk to a machine, more and more, Google has started to adopt things from schema.org. And what's great is all of you in Director's Cut are going to get serious exposure and tools. Like even if you didn't understand a word coming out of my mouth, Mike Hayden has taken our material and course and well-trained and he's written a theme that it will do this for you automatically. You guys get that? So you don't even have to understand what I'm saying and the theme that one of the themes that you'll be getting has done that. Another example is schema.org is creative work. So to give you an idea, if you go over to schema.org, you can go directly into it. It'll actually, uh, you know, wow, creative work is no longer found. That's awesome. Do you need, like, dub, dub, dub? dub still didn't have any errors. Yeah, that's okay. Oh. Um, oh, oh, oh. Yeah, and again, schema.org is uh, really the standard for what Google is now using for semantic markup. Now, what this does is this, this helps Google understand what type of schema marked up uh, function this is, and you can tell that this is a property headline. And there's many, many other things, like there's video, which is not, I haven't marked up Jimmy's videos on his page yet, and you can even mark up testimonials, you can mark up different things. So this is just a different overview, but where it meets in the world, real world, let me just drop this into all of you, uh, where it meets in the real world is that um, this type of schema can actually make the difference between getting a video indexed in, you know, in the search engine with a thumbnail. It can actually help you get, you know, like a a wiki entry on the page depending upon certain things. So there's all kinds of benefits that we don't really have time to get into for having things properly marked up within your blog. And the easiest way to do that is just, you know, use a theme, for instance, um, the kind of theme that you'll be getting in Director's Cut. Does that make sense? So in the real world, you know, we can talk theory all day long, but it's really about what Google decides to use in terms of schema. Okay, let me see if the web, let me see if the web page is actually... Google, uh, Google has decided to adopt schema standards, uh, which is an agreement amongst many organizations uh, that determine, including, including Google. Wow, they're they're actually delineators down. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's really interesting. Okay, normally it's there though. Who knows why they're down? They may be updating their servers, but it's a huge organization, and this is one of the ways that you're able to make it even more clear to Google. And more and more, we have seen that Google gives you boosts in rankings when you start applying all these things because you've gone to the extra effort, you know, to give a, a language to the machine world that's even above and beyond HTML or anything else. Give me a little bit of a one if you guys understand that enough to trust the process of just using uh, a theme that works. If you understand the benefits of the theme that we're going to be giving you. Okay, huge one. That's okay, Dan. I think it's interesting one too, Russ. Huh? I think it's interesting too. It's like, you know, Google tried its play at the social platform there for a while, and I, I'm not so sure that cut on caught on the way they were hoping. Yeah. But really trying to understand personalized search, I think, is where they're trying to go. I mean, 
you see the explosive stuff that's going on with, in the mobile market yeah. and, and how much that's grown over time. I mean, I think, you know, for an example for folks on the call, it's like they want to know that if I shared a chocolate chip cookie recipe, they they want to actually know the, the connection this, that that actually is your great grandma's chocolate chip cookie recipe. Yeah. Because by understanding people and the connections of people and businesses, they can provide more personalized results. Yeah, it really is about moving. And again, we covered this in, in trainings within our own organization. You guys are getting the distilled essence of that. Uh, but really, it is about, like Jimmy just described, wanting more and more um, for hu machines to be intelligent and to help humans make them more intelligent by offering all the connections. And the interesting part is when you start to get all these agreements about what is what, like, is something worth being an entity? You know, do we turn something in? Like, is a video, you know, a video for me is very important in terms of marking it up schematically because, uh, you, you know, because there's benefits of getting those video indexed. So that's the real reason why you don't want to get involved in all this brain damage. And we make that really easy for you by the theme that you guys are getting. So. Exactly. All right, so Paul asks a great question. He's got Vcrack and a social explosion running on a subdomain off of his money site. And it's the only regular publishing. Is it okay to use the vkraken feed in the one feed process? Uh, yes, absolutely. You can. That's going to increase the domain authority on your domain and help your rankings on your money site. All right. Um, if I start a brand new domain, a local website, and I set up the one feed before adding content, don't do that. Like, let me just stop you right there. I'm, it's probably something that we failed to mention. You want to add at least one blog post before you do your one feed. Otherwise, um, your feed is empty and it'll be rejected. So let me continue on with your questions. Should I then paste the frequency of posting or can I just post all content in one go? I would, I personally would paste the posting. Google prefers to see it drip out over time. Um, but, you know, you could post, like, you could post, like, five or six things right up front so that there's some stuff in your feed and then drip out the rest. And asking in terms of creating large amounts of backlinks. Yeah, yeah it'll create large amounts of backlinks regardless. All right. Um, Lisa, what do you think of the WordPress theme that doesn't allow full blog post display, only showing an excerpt or printer style on the home page? Will it still pass link juice? Yes, it will still pass link juice. If you're trying to get, um, if the majority of your page authority is on your home page, then just have your link up in the excerpt section. Um, if we use a plugin that will install about page privacy default plugins in a few clicks, will it leave a footprint? I wouldn't worry about a footprint like that. Lots of people use those kinds of plugins. The same concern of using PBN Manager like Manage WP, if it would leave a footprint. So Manage WP um, I tell you what, on my networks I use main WP and I know in main WP I can turn off the appearance of the child plugin on the network blocks. I don't remember whether or not you can turn that off in manage WP. Um, mm. Don't think so. I wouldn't, I, I would tend to not use manage WP on my network just because it gets prohibitively expensive, but yeah, I, I would take a, a close look at main WP because you can get basically the same functionality for a much cheaper price. The main plugin for main WP is free, and then so you can just pick the, uh, the add-ons that you want. All right, do you use a separate Facebook account? I think we talked about Facebook plenty. With DAS, are the links exact or is LSI okay? Mr. Kelly. Are you still with us? Of course. <laughs> you know, kind of, you know, 
look at the TOKT section um, that we went through. That, you know, we're trying to pick out the most relevant LSIs, and it's certainly okay to use, um, you know, long tail versions of the keyword as well. Um, and you'll, you know, the those videos, that section was kind of lengthy, I think, on that. So I, I would just go back and review those videos. You know, kind of, it should make sense, you know, what uh, what we're trying to do by picking out the most relevant LSIs and then integrating it into the DAS structure. Yeah. Dustin asks, what does WR1 mean? I'm so sorry, that's some Network Empire yeah, jargon. Yeah, we shouldn't use that, huh? your, Yeah, it's your, your money site. Um, Kristen says, I think that's part two of something Kristen must have said earlier. Christine, sorry. Um, How do you point Facebook to cbell.me slash greensmoke mm. if you have Facebook point? Uh, all right, so there's a bunch of different links that are going to be inside of Facebook, right? So in the profile area, when I go to set up my Facebook page, I would have the link to cbell.me. But then as you actually post, particularly like if you have your feed going through Facebook, then as your feed posts into Facebook, um, you'll have that link go back to that page. So so let's say that you post 10 new blog posts and that goes in your feed. Those posts are going to get posted in your Facebook and each one of those posts is going to have the link back to that blog post. So that that's how you get the how you get it to point to different things. And you can always go in and, and do a, a manual um, entry inside of Facebook and point back to your silo site. So like you know my friends always give me shit because the only thing going on on my Facebook page is my feed. So um, if you can have a good Facebook page, you might want to have the occasional actual post. And, and so those can go back to your silo landing pages or not to anywhere at all if you want. All right. So scroll down a little bit here. Doing a page for each city. social accounts for each page. If you're doing a page for each city, like a Google Places page, like Khan, I'm sure that you're doing social accounts. I think we've talked a lot about the different social accounts, having multiple social accounts for sites and pages and stuff. I think we've covered that. If we haven't, James, rephrase your question and, and give it to us again. Um, What's the DAS method? You know, so the the method that we put down in uh, those videos inside of Director's Cut for DAS is pretty standard. Um, the only thing that happens is you change up the properties. So that's going to be pretty much what was done for the Franklin site. Will we be recommending the software tools we need to have in order to use? Yeah, we talk about that um, in the videos. Whenever we we talked about a piece of software, we mentioned where it was and how you can get it. And I believe most of those videos at this point have got write-ups underneath it. There might be one or two left that don't. But in those write-ups, you should have links to all of the sales pages or download pages or whatever, too. Um. out of context. I don't know what he's talking about anymore. When building multiple pages on Blogger, more than two, do we link all of the pages to the one page that will link to our domain, or do we link each page to the next? So if you're on Blogger, you've got more than two pages, do you link all of those pages to one page? So I'll let you respond to that, Jimmy. Sorry, I had to take a call there for a, my no worries. truck getting so, worked on. Um, so, when, did you hear the question? No, I didn't get. Okay, when building multiple pages on Blogger, more than two, do we link all of the pages to the one page that will link to our domain, 
or do we link each page to the next? You want to link all the pages to the page that's going to link to your domain. Good. And then I try, with each additional page too, I'm trying to mix in other LSIs or long tails um, back to that page that's then going to link up to the, to the money site. All right, good. So let's, we're half an hour into the web in terms of questions. I think we're most of the way up. Um, one of the videos we mentioned to use PBNs, the web 2.0. Who it is it was mentioned to use your PBN, the web 2.0. I oh, know you can link your PBNs to the money site. A great, a great question back down all the way to the bottom. Yes. yes. You know, sometimes I'll... Go ahead, Russ. No, that's all right, Jimmy. You were on point, point with the question. Go for it. I was going to say, like, sometimes even I'll throw in, like, maybe in sub blog or maybe I'll throw in a good PBN right there. You know, sometimes I mix in my PBNs with my DAS stacks as well. Okay. So... Oh, cool. Uh, Does Hootsuite only accept domain extensions without the .com? No, I, I think that they accept oh, with the .com. I, I don't think so. I think they'll accept anything. No, they wouldn't let me get my extension. Yeah, put in a help desk uh, thing to Hootsuite if you've got a problem with that. Yeah, they should, shouldn't be a problem. LSI, Stuart, means latent semantic indexing. Um, latent semantic indexing is just a fancy schmancy way of saying that Google is watching the type, it's specifically where we talk to you about it is in terms of over optimization. You'll hear Jimmy and Sue constantly making sure that you don't put the same word, the same place throughout your structure of your site. You want to diversify. And LSI terms are specific terms that tools like the last keyword tool, which we introduced to you, we, we wrote, introduced to you in the director's cut. Uh, is one of the only LSI keyword tools out there that has fresh squeezed LSI keywords. And these are, these are the terms that, that Jimmy's dropping when he says use LSI terms there. They're keywords that are related, yeah. but they're not the same as your over-optimized terms. Yeah, exactly. I've noticed that um, both Greg and Jimmy use so, that phrase of LSI, and, and it's a slight misnomer yeah. in that LSI is actually an index, so it's actually a number. Yeah. But what they're trying to say is thematically relevant keywords. Yeah, that are not the same. As yeah, so, and, yeah, so for an example for LSI, just so people are on the same page, I would say you, know, if I was going after cheap car insurance, I might use affordable auto insurance, and that would be an example of an LSI. If that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. Richard, Hoyl um. Richard Hoyland has a naughty question back at the bottom. Okay. If a PBN has been de-indexed, can we use a 301 redirect to a domain authority stack property or money site? Or are they completely toxic once they've been de-indexed by Google? <laughs> um, you know, the, the, quick yes. answer, yeah, the quick answer to that is that they're toxic once they've been, unless you jump through a hoop, they're, they're toxic. Okay. Yeah, you could use them to 301 to a 2.0 if you... So chose. Gotcha. <clears throat> contextual link definition. So the definition of a contextual link is a link that's actually within the text um, as opposed to um, like an, a link from an image or even a link from a menu. Yeah, it's a link inside of an article. Does that make sense? Yeah. Okay. All right, cool. Let's see where we are. Do I have to use anchor text link from HWeb 2.0 or just put the URL of my Facebook in Weebly.com? I always try to apply, so in, this, in the example of that image, I always try to apply a contextual link that has the keyword to the Facebook page or post, whichever it is. So in our example, we have a post that's going to the money site, you know, the, the Facebook 
share is going to the money site and then my links to that Facebook page will be keyword oriented. Yeah. So now I'm down at a point where I'm trying to figure out what questions. Okay, well, Probably a lot of these questions were answered. Yeah, a lot of them have been answered because we yeah, I was pulling yeah. them from there. There's one at the bottom that's kind of interesting. Um, this is from, I won't use your full name, this is from Stephen. In regards to profile creation, can I use my previous business Twitter profile, Facebook, etc., that were initially set up using my biz email? Or will I need to set up them again once using my Gmail account? Um, there's no real problem. Uh, but again, it really depends on what your business model is and what you're trying to accomplish. But ultimately, your email for Facebook setup and the rest is not super relevant. What is relevant is that you're keeping your social accounts thematically relevant. Again, that's what I was trying to address earlier when we were asked about how many Google dashboards should you have. Um, you know, again, what you're going to do with your social accounts is you're going to add them to your Google Plus Biz page about us and other locations to power them up a bit. And you know, so. The more, what's more important for me, just as a business person, is that they're thematically related. For example, if your previous Twitter account is full of tweets from, about, you know, survival bug out bags, you know, it might be, you may want to consider doing another Twitter account if, for example, your core business that you're setting up on your Google dashboard and Gmail account is about diamond rings and jewelry. You know what I'm saying? I mean, it just, it just might be useful. Now, that being said, there's nothing stopping you from using previous social accounts just you, you know the way that we like to think about is is a one-to-one -one relationship with thematic thematically relevant everything and a related connected uh, relationship that's you know socially relevant as well all right i hear crickets yeah oh. i'm looking for the next question okay um well there might not be any so I, I have I see a couple. Okay, go for it. I, well, I keep seeing the same one or similar ones come through. Mm -hmm. There, as people have been asking, do I use GSA to boost up the yeah um, the properties with DAS? Is it so effective if you don't do it? Yes, it'll still it'll still rank just fine the way we laid it out. Um, you don't need to use GSA. Um, I do use GSA in some instances but it's not necessary to do so. Um, how and where I apply my GSA would best be done, you know, they would have to, they would have had to have taken that, that course really to know the when and what and where because there's too many situations yeah. where it depends. Yeah, we're not, really, we're not <laughs> teaching GSA and Director's Cut folks. Just, I'm going to come out and say that's why I skipped the question. We're not going to teach it. We're going to, we'll teach how, you know, the, the best standards in regards to it, if you ask, but it's not part of it. Dietrich has got a really interesting question. Is there a good way to analyze competition on the first page of Google for a given keyword so that we can gauge slash estimate how many links DAS stacks will be needed in order to rank on the front page? This would be very helpful to be able to judge how much to charge clients for the amount of time, work, and content needed to rank for a given keyword. Um, we actually wrote an entire application called Network Empire Builder that helps you do exactly that. And I'm trying to think, do we have a, a video for Network Empire Builder anywhere in OMG, Ross? No, uh, any silo builder? No. Okay. Trying to think of the best place to send them so that he can get an overview of what that does and how it does it. Um, do you want to drop him a link? Or maybe drop everybody a link? I don't know where he is or what question you're even on. Oh, can you see my screen? Uh, I can, yeah. Okay. But It's at a minute 42 mark. Um, or if you want to, just we're looking at somebody's screen. My, my is, we're looking at somebody's screen. I don't think it's yours, though. Oh, really? Mm -hmm. What do you see? Um, the questions in the middle of the screen. No. Well, the questions are invisible. You know that, right? Oh, somehow Greg gets them to show up. Oh, really? Maybe I, th I think it's a oh, setting. Oh, so you you seen at the you seen the calculator all this time? Yeah. 
Oh, that's terrible. Yeah, we thought you were about to show us some calculations. Oh, I'm so sorry. I wonder how the heck Greg got that to show Oh, Jay is saying that he cuts and pastes them. That's probably something that we need to do. Um, yeah, so we've just been uh, audio radio show since you started reading these. I see. I'm so sorry. It's okay. No, it's all right. all right. Thanks for your patience, so, everyone. We're just still working out the system here. That makes a lot of sense. You know, I think uh, I think David had said something like that. Um, so, I have no idea where that went to. All right, good. Um, yeah, tried to copy and paste it. Oh, there it went. Hmm, somebody was saying, so, um, someone is, oh, there's a question. Okay, that's different. All right. So, NetworkEmpire.com, just the, the homepage on NetworkEmpire.com, talks quite a bit about Network Empire Builder. Yeah. Um, I think that's probably the best place. To yeah, just start, just start there. Let's not get too much into any silo builder in this call. Somebody's asking here, yeah. is Kraken the same as Video Silo? Definitely not. Um, it's just not. Okay, uh, Kraken is a, a software as a service that we have, and Video Kraken is a plugin that was addressed in, I think, other courses. I'm not sure. I think we're going to readdress them in Director's Cup, but I'm not 100% sure. Okay. Um, let's see. All right, good. So let me just shift gears for a second here. Um, let's get everybody active. I, I'm actually astounded that there's this many people. Like most of everybody that was here at the beginning is still here now, and that actually just blows my mind. Uh, Janine, I want to address this. No uh, thematic thematic relevance and themes and social accounts that are thematically relevant does not increase their suspicion from Google. Google. If anything, it decreases suspicion because the topics and the themes are related across the network, which is a natural topic. Of course, there's social accounts that talks about everything and everything, like, you know, teenager accounts and the rest. But businesses and professional businesses tend to talk about the same type of topics and themes, like a computer store, Best Buy, or what's going to talk about this. So, that, again, that gives you thematic relevance. Okay, so that's not, that's not, when we're talking about footprints, that's not one that's going to be hugely of concern. The kind of footprints we're talking about is, you know, we'll get more into it. We, get, we talk a little bit about that in our videos. So, I would like to say, first of all, um, give me a, let's go ahead and get some feedback from the audience. Give me a one if you really, really, really are getting, only if you really, 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 that's three reallys, are getting value out of the, this question and answer session, if it's clarifying and verifying. Give me a two, and honestly, I will not read your name if it's like a meh, you know, that's okay because we want feedback. And if it's not, and also give us a re, what you'd like to see you know, some enhancements. This is our first shot, so, you know, keep in mind that we're trying to get feedback to make sure. Yes. Uh, oh, that's interesting that uh, yeah, somebody's saying, please remember to add what, add what, the um, questions? I think we can, but I'm not sure about that. Okay, I guess we could. Yeah, there's a huge number of ones, so we, we have a pretty much overwhelming number of people that are finding this question and answer follow-up very, very useful. And also, there's a couple people giving feedback here. Excellent. Okay, that's good. Some of you want more diagrams even. Okay, um, someone has said that he likes the way that Russell is helping everybody keep up and doing things. That's great. Appreciate that, John. Um, let's see. Okay, that's Dustin, that's good. So huge number of ones, and then the few, uh, few people would like us to slow down just a little bit. Now, one thing I want to say, thanks, Steve, Steve, that this is totally lethal. Uh, good. You know, so all of us, you know, in this room are at different levels of experience. Some of you we talked earlier haven't quite finished the director's cut all the way. Um, more diagrams you guys like. Yes, but one of the big feedbacks uh, is getting those diagrams that we're talking about. Cardi is saying, I really appreciate Russell clearing up those things. You're welcome. Yeah, so that's okay. We're getting to know you guys, and we're getting to know working together. This is a huge amount of information that really can be distilled into these simple steps. And, uh, and we appreciate your feedback uh, because that will help us get the things that we need to get to you. 
uh, as quickly as possible. And so really, I'm really, really excited uh, to be working with each and every one of you because you help keep me on my toes and asking these questions that sometimes, you know, I've been doing it for so long, just, you know, I can do it in my sleep sometimes, I know for all three of us. So you guys will get to that point as well. Uh, so, you know, that's really where I'm at. I think that we should start to wind down, Sue, and, and move on. You know, oh, yeah, I agree. This has been our, I think we've pretty much covered really, um, most of the questions. We really have. We really have. Um, the, the, the main thing that we just wanted to, you know, when Mike and David and Greg asked us to do this kickoff webinar, this has actually been really, really good because it gets us, gives us a sense. Because as you know, we have many more of these coming up. And they're going to be, I believe, the set dates that we agreed on. They're, no, they're not going to be on, on Friday in the future. I think they got moved. No, they're on Tuesdays. They're going to be on Tuesdays. And, and some of them are going to be at 1 o'clock at our time, mm -hmm. uh, mountain time, and some of them are going to be at 6 o'clock. So we're varying the time so that guys in different locations around the world will be able to attend at least yep. some of the webinars. And, of course, all of that will be listed in the Director's Cut area. And uh, i got to tell you guys, I'm impressed as heck with you and your discipline. There's still 150 people still in this room after tune in. Mean, that's, that's intense focus, you guys. That tells me that you're all badasses and that you, I mean, to be able to go through these things and really stay focused on this kind of a technical thing this long says a lot about you. So I think I'm going to go ahead and wrap this up, you guys, and I look forward uh, to the next one. This really gives us a lot to work with. Uh, Sue and Jimmy, do you have anything that you'd like to add? to this event? Yeah, there was one thing that I want to add. Um, on, the, uh, on the email autoresponder that went out when you signed up for the webinar, it said if you have questions um, or feedback, please email sue at themezoom.com. Please don't. i got to go change that email address. Mm -hmm. My inbox is a mess and it's, um, it's not manageable. So I will get that switched over to an email account that um, that our help desk team looks at, and not just yeah, me. Yeah, that was an accident. And, and we'll make that. Yeah. Uh, and and uh, unfortunately, yeah, we can't really be emailing the CEO of three of our companies. She doesn't really have the time to do that. And we're lucky. We're lucky that we get her here. I'm lucky that I even get her here. In fact, I'm going to start using these sessions to ask her question, her and Jimmy question. <laughs> um, so just want to want you guys first and foremost to not be offended if you put an email. Uh, through to the webinar, it's not going to get answered. Okay, so we'll we'll follow. It's not because we're. It's just simply because we can't. It was an accident, but we will do our best to make sure that all of these FAQ questions are answered, and we'll continue to find. One of the things that I want to tell you guys is that after talking to a, a, a specific group and a, and a, and a specific. Uh, type of to on a specific topic. Uh, after the first couple of times, we get a real understanding of what the common questions are. And it also helps us up our game a little bit and make sure that we really, um, you know, focus on, you know, the common frequently asked questions in the group and really make sure that any stumbling blocks that we maybe haven't uh, explained as best we could are really tightened up on the next one. So this is going to be really, really great. Okay. Um, thank you so much. Jimmy, thanks so much for being with us. I really, it's been really exciting. Sue, thanks for taking time out of this busy day. We are going to get off this call and we're going to go work on the one feed supercharger. We're going to do some updates. We're working on social explosion. We got the new, all new SEO silo plugins uh, that are in the final stages. So much going on, you guys. I'm really, really excited about all of it. And um, we're going to be, be really looking forward to sharing all the new releases with you guys and, and talking more and more about what's going on in Director's Cut. Thank you so much. This has been Indeed. Russell Wright, Sue Bell, Jimmy Kelly, Director's Cut. Look forward to seeing you on the inside of the Director's Cut members area. Thank you. Thanks, guys.